Hello, friends, and welcome to the sixth episode of Star Wars Desperate Gamble here on Roll20 Stream. We are back once again this week. Uh, you may notice that we are once again visited by the ominous form of RST3 in Krino's uh, location. Uh, Gabe is absent today dealing with a glasses-related crisis. Uh, so we, we three will forge on once again without our bounty hunter associate. Um, but n enough of that. Uh, how's, how's everybody doing? It's been a whole week. How are you feeling about all the weird stuff we've discovered from last week? And, and how's, how, what's the There's vibe? so many things we don't have answers for, and Zyle needs answers. <laughs> Zyle require answers. <laughs> Zyle is curious boy. Zyle always needs answers. Mm. Well, I... Yeah. I can promise that the answers exist, but I can't promise that you'll necessarily find them anytime soon. Or... Especially if we needs roll. To be smarter. Zyle needs to know more things. How I make Zyle smarter, I work on it. <laughs> I keep I taking skill ranks, keep then. taking skill ranks in xenology and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I do. I'm going to do that. It is on the list. No, I'm if glad, you yeah. haven't noticed, chat, the list is getting longer and longer. Yeah, things it's I like, need for Zyle. It's like what? Survival and then like all the knowledge survival, skills. <laughs> yeah, all the knowledge skills. Force sensitive exile. It's yeah, which will which will cost you 20 right out the gate. So oh, yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Did you plan I'm this all to... along? Did you plan the force sensitive oh, Zyle? I do. Well, I... this is the thing. I had this conversation with y'all kind of early on yeah. that Zyle's name is basically inspired by the fact that they are in exile. So oh, I've that forgotten. Worked. That didn't work. <laughs> I, I, I've realized that the cameras are uh, are not in the right places, but I also tried to, I tried to move them and I've moved them and now it's oh, even worse. Do we need to do a camera shuffle? Yeah, Did but I think I, to? I think I may need to shuffle. No, it's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to move everybody around. Uh, okay. and, we'll, and we'll deal with it later. I, I, yes. Cause I've messed up our order by trying to, oh, no. trying to do things a different way. So just, just give well, me one minute while I do that. Nobody pay attention to that. Keep talking about other stuff. It's I'm fine. excited for you all to know more about Zyle and especially their full name since apparently Chiss have longer names than are usually. They do. Uh, yes. Spoken if we of. explore I'm it, slowly it's adding. Be the whole well, this is the thing. I'm slowly adding little bits and pieces to the backstory. Uh, Elf has had to field random Discord texts from me at all hours of the. Yeah, but I deal with like the, listen. I deal with the Desperate Gamble Discord, who are the most dedicated fan community I've ever been a part of. So you know what? Like your random questions are nothing. Nothing that compared makes me, to the oh, Discord. Oh, well, then I guess I just have to be like, I don't have more stuff. Because I was just thinking Do, before we got please. started about how exactly Zyle got onto this planet and what exactly that entailed. And so you might be getting more. Do you, well, I mean, do you want to talk about it? We could we could have that conversation pretty much like immediately. I mean, well, like, because my. to decide whether or not they, they, they stole a ship themselves and crashed it real hard on this planet. But my, there um, is no salvaging it. That's my, my, my assumption, my assumption is that they came here on some kind of like chartered shuttle because there are yeah, yeah, yeah. around the Star Wars galaxy there are chartered ships. Uh, I'm trying to decide though if they actually chartered themselves or if they smuggled themselves aboard. If oh, they sure. were a stowaway, you because stowaway. you know, I, I think stowaway is a little bit more. I don't imagine. With, I don't imagine there's a whole lot of traffic to vote, though there are tour like tourism related situations. So like the idea of like a bus being I like, like the you know. idea of them looking at a star a star map and just kind of closing their eyes and kind of like <laughs> doing this and going. Dart. Yeah. Huh. yeah, yeah. I don't uh, know nothing about that, like but let's go there. Um it's, it's... and that just kind of being their whole thing. Yeah, I mean it's uh. definitely it's definitely possible. And by the way, anybody any of my players, please, if you have any like thoughts about your PC do not feel, uh, you know, like you can't just message me about it and we can chat it out if you've got some kind of like plan or whatever. You're welcome to how, do so. How far in the future is this from the... I can't even remember which episode it is that um, Admiral Akbar gets blown up. That would be Return of the Jedi, and I don't think he gets blown up. Yeah, doesn't he, he survive the he whole experience? He lives. He's in the fight at the end of Rise of Skywalker, I'm pretty sure. Oh. He says it's a trap, but he doesn't die. 
You know what oh. I mean? Like, uh, okay. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure Admiral well. Akbar is alive. Uh, though I can't remember what happened in uh, Rise of Skywalker because I've only ever seen it once. It's the worst Star Wars movie ever made. Uh, so, yes. how long has it been since since the the films? Uh, since the end of uh, Return of the Jedi, which would be the fall yeah. of the Empire, I would yeah. say it's been one week since you looked at me. I mean, it's like Mandalorian style, so it's maybe like 20, 30 years, I think. Like, or maybe maybe a little shorter than that, like five years. I haven't thought of the exact chronology. I will. Because I'm not I'm not sure if Alpha Bar is my uncle or my great uncle. I mean, he he could definitely be your uncle. Like he's right. you know. And the thing about Mon Calamari, the Bar. thing about Mon Calamari is they they are like frogs in the way that they do, uh, like spawning. So he's lots of people's uncle. He's like many 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 people's uncle. Uh, is, the, is the thing. Um, at least as far as I remember, I'm not an expert on Mon Calamari, to be honest. <laughs> do they do like I would imagine they spawn a bit like fish do, which means you know lots lots of spawn, many eggs, so yes. many spawn, many eggs, many eggs, many fertilize. That's it. I want not to much... be friends with Mabel. I want to be. I want to be better friends with Mabel. Mabel's great. Mm. Well, I... Mabel is a bit of a. I like that she's a dark duck. horse. She's yeah. a bit of a dark horse, and I like that about her. Cool. I think Zyle, I think Zyle uh, uh, is... Yeah. I, I want to make friends with Mabel. I, I wonder if it's a... I wonder if with Mabel it's like a bedside manner thing. The whole, like, don't get super connected to people because they might be really sick. Yeah, they uh, might just die. Yeah, kind of. Um, I think there are a couple reasons me. why Mabel would be... Uh, reluctant to... slow to slow to warm up to people like not least of which is that a lot of the people she has dealt with have been imperial uh folks who are were not kind to her well i'm just a cute you things. have to be nice to me you know it's hard to argue with oh. i'm just a naive starry-eyed little kid chat has, in, be nice chat, chat has informed me that in fact uh admiral akbar dies in the last jedi so uh he's still alive right now is the the, uh, yeah, he gets blown up in the in the sequel films. Yeah, not in... yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because he he's in one of the he's in one life. of the ships yeah. being chased by uh by the big super star destroyer. Anyway, I'm sorry, rambling over the top of things that are relevant to the actual game. Uh, I, I just you know when it comes to Star Wars trivia, I can't help but make sure that I'm right. Uh, yeah, I mean if I'm wrong the first time. Um. So, what's the people week been like? We go do that. Oh yeah, you you want you want to do the the casual chatter? I know I, I went into character chatter too fast. You're right. How has your week been, Dave? Tell me. I knew it was a segment, but as I said it, I realized yeah, I didn't have. Yeah, you an brought answer this yet. up. Don't you have a don't you have a thing? Yeah. <laughs> uh... That's convincing. Yeah. I'm nailed convinced. it, Dave. Perfect. Nailed. <laughs> Excellent. I, Fucking nailed I, I, it. I think... What did I do this week? I went outside sometimes. Holy shit. It was shit. sunny enough to No way. <laughs> <laughs> what I was, was it like? like? I have to admit, I also went outside a couple of days ago and rode my bike around for like half an hour, and it was really nice. What is outside? Yeah. Is nice. I've never heard of it. Oh, yeah, there was a live let for Final Fantasy today. That was very exciting. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. I thought that would that would be on your list. I was uh, surprised when it didn't come up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can yeah. only lead you so far, dude. <laughs> so that's that's pretty sick. I'm I'm super excited for all the Final Fantasy stuff. Yeah, um, they do a really good job of um, having frequent enough updates that there's always sort of something on the horizon. It like won't go more than two and a half months in between like either a patch or half a patch or a letter about the patch and, you know i mean that's good like keeping cool. keeping your community informed i think is like a big part of running like one of those gigantic mmo style games and some companies do it better than others for sure um i don't know seems seems like the the way to go um, I know that it would hold my interest better if I had time to play an MMO, but I definitely don't. 
Oh, and we're back. I froze you for are, a sec. You are, you are back, Dave. Oh, yeah, we're in the, um, trying to guess what the new class oh, is yeah. going to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Maybe I'll maybe well. I'll maybe I'll turn my subscription back on to get to eighty before the expansion comes out. So. <laughs> it's, I think it's like a Grim Reaper type class with a scythe. I mean, then I have. But I don't then think I, it's going to be called that. Then I have to. <laughs> so, you know. What yeah, could be no. edgier than a scythe? Yeah, nothing, nothing yeah. at all. Um, how so, about, how about, I have a random question. Please. I've always been curious about the way that the dice pools are set up, like visually. Uh huh. Because when you look at the skill, you know, they're set up as diamonds, the green die. Yep. To look like D8. But the actual dice pools themselves, when you like roll them for like the thing, yes. show up instead as, you know, D4s. I think they look it, like D4s. I think it's and just, I've always find that interesting. I think it's just a symbolic representation of the, the flat side of the die. Um, hmm. I don't know if D, D8s have triangles as the like flat side because they're like... Mm -hmm. It's two D4s, they're two D4s, basically. They're on top of each other. Or, well, they're four-sided instead of three-sided pyramids, but yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. Very but I've just found idea. that very interesting. It's just like, for the neatness of the aesthetic mm -hmm. as opposed to the actual factual representation of the die it is a slightly it is a slightly different kind of uh, by the way uh the mention uh, the slightly different kind of symbology but same color so that's good and by the way the mention of scythes has got me thinking about lightsaber scythe now and oh yeah I, like that sounds fucking awesome that sounds really cool uh i don't know how you would do it properly you'd have to make the staff out of like cartosis or something because you're gonna hit it against lightsabers like theoretically but I'm, you know, I'm just. Would you like make a light beam that just, curved anyway? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, to start I'm just putting it out there. I'm gonna make one. What I want <laughs> Zyle's lightsaber to look like now. <laughs> You're not getting a lightsaber. Getting ahead of yourself. I, I am. Think. Getting ahead of yourself just a little, oh. just, a, just a tiny smidge. Yeah, uh, you may be in season three. You know. Um, if you get lightsaber again, later. Lightsaber. I, I mean, whatever you know, like eventually, no, Everyone no grass, can have a lightsaber. no grass will survive the light scythe. Indeed, yeah, no, I. <laughs> but come on, lightsaber scythe. That sounds sweet. That sounds great. It is, I, it's super cool. I mean, pretty much any weapon if you turn it into a lightsaber is fucking rad. That's true. Yes, accurate. Lightsaber. Trying to think of the weirdest one that I can imagine. Like okay, lightsaber, lightsaber boomerang. Lightsaber, oh, ooh, lightsaber boomerang. Cool, man. It would fly a long way and come back because it cuts through anything. So it's just like you just throw it and it just goes, you know. Yeah, they you you throw How lightsabers you... anyway. Catching Probably it, catch, 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 it catching that. it would be what you know. What you do is it's a it's a it's a projectile weapon that is a handle like a one of those like um scoops that you use for like the sports that have, I don't know what the name of the sport is because I'm bad at sports. Um, Lacrosse. But when you it's like the one-handed scoop thing um mm -hmm. but but you use it and you like throw boomerang like lightsaber boomerangs as projectiles you know what i mean and they don't come back they just you just like throw them that's pretty like, neat like a i like the idea of a lightsaber trident lightsaber trident is pretty sick yeah i like that yeah light, light a <laughs> lightsaber two by four with nails in it <laughs> yes <laughs> the nails are made out of yeah. are made of the energy from yeah. the kyber crystal it's great lightsaber boxing gloves would be sick because you could actually if you had like a way to project the beams across like a short distance on the back of your hands or like on the on like gloves, that would be awesome. You could do like wrist Basically. wrist guards too. You know, that would be, be really cool. Like a, High yeah. life. That's the sport I'm thinking of. The the like scoop ball scoop thing. Feel knuckle. Never heard of that. Yeah. Ever. Well, now you have. Is it real? Yeah. It is. It's real. Well, I was it's muted. Real. I I said highlight earlier. Oh, you were muted, so I. Could but I guess I was like... muted. I thought I wasn't muted, and then I muted myself to say it. Yeah, uh, it's great. No, okay. Yeah. Classic you can't stuff. Do that. You the gotta, you gotta make your voice chat, heard, my man. Chat, chat also suggests the worst hula hoop ever, uh, as a lightsaber weapon. Um, <laughs> although, although you could do like a cool hoop weapon with like handles on the inside or something. Yeah. Like oh, like you know, what's like, your name from League of like, Legends? Like Tira or Kiana. Yeah, like from various franchises that would be pretty imagine sick. all of the people from overwatch with lightsabers <laughs> genji lightsaber weapon. is just a lightsaber it's just a regular lightsaber yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you heal with a lightsaber you oh it's really funny i actually um 
<laughs> the rest of my my uh, group doesn't know the only per- only the person who made it and my gm knows that i did this mm-hmm. is that i essentially made a lightsaber for a game that when i when i hit people with it it actually heals them instead of hurting them <laughs> so i made like oh, healing. Cute. yeah like, like medical my, lightsaber i made a medical lightsaber basically essentially for one of my home games but nobody in the group knows that's what i made <laughs> yet uh because i haven't had the chance to use it so it's just been like clipped to my clipped to my uh, belt waiting to be I used mean, i mean lightsaber kusari gama sounds awesome like a little like scythe on a chain that's like lightsaber you know a little little like comma on a chain like lightsaber it, I, there must be a canonical or at least a, a legends lightsaber katana I mean, at some sure. point. I mean, the way that they design the lightsabers in like the High Republic, they look more like swords. Uh, I mean, even even sure. the uh, the dark saber looks more like a katana than it looks. Yeah, like the a dark saber is like a is a good example of that. Yeah, I'm on a katana lightsaber. <laughs> Making one for they're basically already they're katana. Basic, Dave. Yeah, they're basically yeah, they're already like that. Gobil, they're Gobil swords without they're swords without chief. a guard. You can. There's a whole lightsaber style about turning your lightsaber on and off during combat. There is an entire lightsaber style of the, where you literally just like turn it on and off to surprise people. It's like EI drawing for sure. All right, that's the one only pro player's gonna want. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. He, so he, when we all he, have he, our they lightsabers, won't, they won't hoist a blaster to fire at anything, but they'll definitely learn a lightsaber style for sure. Yeah, just to block laser blasts. But then you, don't the, style. you don't learn blasters the one to turn so it barbaric. off. <laughs> <laughs> blasters are so barbaric, as we've learned. Yeah. Yeah, Light- lightsaber Lance from chat. Ooh, oh. yeah. Could you imagine doing lightsaber? Um, uh, uh, what are they called? Jousting. Uh, jousting. Jousting. Yes, lightsaber jousting. I mean, there are shields that can resist lightsaber uh, uh, strikes. Uh, there's a material in the Star Wars universe called cortosis, and it is lightsaber resistant. It's like one of the only materials. And everybody who would fight Jedi has, like, you know armor made out of it or whatever and yeah is, is is could Beskar captain america also block the lightsaber or not is what sorry beskar is not lightsaber Be- uh, beskar is re- yeah i think it's resistant but not immune right Ooh. the thing about cortosis is it would short out lightsabers when you hit it like the, Ooh, shit yeah something about it like disrupts the lightsaber beam it's um, the Lightsaber tonfas are a real thing uh in the canon there is a jedi who has lightsaber tonfas they they exist or it was a Sith. I don't remember, but they're in, um, they're in Force Unleashed, I think, or like Force Unleashed Two. I mean, I oh yeah, I remember some, that. I should. Now. Yeah. I think since I gave since I gave Zyla a Kiwi accent, I should look into some like indigenous weaponry and stuff because that could be a cool inspiration for, for uh, if yeah. they ever yeah. five thousand seasons from now have a lightsaber. Um. So Gabe. So Gabe. Chat's asking if Gabe is missing this week. Yes. Yes. Gabe is dealing with a glasses-related vision emergency. So we are. We are without. Gabe without couldn't him. see himself being here this week. Yeah. Being, you know. Uh, <laughs> Nicely done, Dave. Uh, but please was, uh, like eject yourself into the sun. You know. yeah. Let, okay, a- Andrew, how's your week been? You know, let's just move on to a different thing. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Things are chill. It's quiet. I got to see. Um, a sort of preliminary uh, layout uh, template for Girl by Moonlight. Oh, sweet! The final like book version. That's great. Um, that looks pretty, pretty fucking sick. I must say. So that was cool. I'm looking forward to purchasing a copy as soon as it's available. <laughs> so yeah, buy my buy my products. I will. I will buy your products. Um. So that's probably like the highlight of my week. We've been coming up we've been coming up with a bunch of five E spells and items and I'm dreading the point and this is on my Tuesday stream, so we do like writing stuff. I'm dreading the point where I have to actually get into the nitty gritty of like what is this spell balance wise? Like what does it do that isn't just a vague description of like what it does? Um Hit me up. <laughs> Cause I am H M U. I am not I'm not at all uh like proficient at the the mechanical side of inventing a thing i like the narrative side of inventing a thing i can do it for you i'll do technical, it for a really small stuff thing. Is also i mean it's also not my forte but i've been i've been in the weeds on it on the book that i'm writing and it has been slow progress but it's getting there 
I mean, the great thing for me, Dave, is that I'm writing it with chat. So chat is very helpful when it comes to like. That's chat, chat's not as good as that, me. I mean, that's probably true, but you know, you could, you could. That's rude. Uh, you can stream with me if you want. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's also true. I've got to do, <laughs> look, I'm always so self-deprecating. I've got to pick a thing and just be like, yeah, I'm good at that. And that's enough. the thing I've picked. So chat, nice try, but I'm a professional. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, suck it, chat. <laughs> yeah Aki did I ask how your week's been I feel like I did but I want to make sure uh, um, before we move I mean, on uh, my week has mostly been like I said uh, getting in the weeds on uh, building stat blocks for my altered carbon book oh uh, yeah which has been uh, tech technical stuff is also not my forte it I, I am not great at onboarding systems unless they are super easy uh, I have to ask you every single week how the fuck I do anything in this game. That is correct. Uh, yes. So <laughs> it's so it's uh it's this and an altered carbon is a robust system uh, that even though I have played through it many times is one I'm still wrapping my brain around. Um, so I I often have moments of what the hell am I doing? It, does any of this make sense? And we're getting very, very close to playtesting. So I just need to be like, okay, I just have to- I just have to You just have to make it work. I yeah. And then have to fix it, it later. And we'll play test it. And if it doesn't make any sense, or it's just like really wildly out of balance, I can fix it after we play test it. But I have to actually put something on a piece of paper. And that's the thing. I mean, sounds sounds fun. Sounds like a good time. Uh, uh, the narrative stuff took me like two months to write. I, I banged out 40 <laughs> some odd pages on the narrative shit like so fast. And then I got to the stat blocks and went <laughs> and stalled on it for ages. That so, is, that is... If y'all want to know how long it takes to build an actual manuscript for a supplement to a very large IP for which you are now creating canon. Like my book is going to be canon, which is... That's definitely cool. In yeah. my in my wildest cool. dreams, we get vote on the Wikipedia. That's my wildest dreams. If they ever <laughs> decide to do more altered carbon in a TV format, and they do anything in Osaka, every single thing from that will be from my book. Sweet. And I will die. <laughs> and then I will be deceased. <laughs> mm, well, I hope not. Hopefully they will let me actually cameo in it because that's what I really want. It's like give me my acting debut in the book. Like it's just let me do this. Just like Stan Lee up, just be hanging out <laughs> yeah. one of the shorts. Now I hope I get to do more than that since I am actually a professionally trained actor and that's what I got my degree in. Yeah. Sick. Uh we doing probably... what you have your degree in. Wow. Yeah. No. That's... Concept. If I had to do what I had, as as I get. if I had to do what I had my degree in, I'd be doing nothing. Uh, <laughs> you'd be doing what? Sorry, sometimes degrees nothing. Are oh, yeah. I don't have one. Um, Neither do I. So uh, let's let's get into some Star Wars. I think that's that's probably like the move here. Um, uh, what what what's the plan today? Like review of last week. You guys found a whole bunch of uh cool stuff about the force ruins there was an alarm that you tripped that like somebody reacted to uh there was like a, a lot of abandoned stuff about the the Vodian native culture that you you've learned that you assume that nobody has seen in a long time uh you know that there is um a an expert on this stuff or at least a proclaimed expert called Haverford who is a Bothan like a historian basically um but he's seen as like sort of a crackpot you know what i mean like his his, mm. his theories are often dismissed by uh those who have who claim to know more if you, if you know what i mean or who or who generally think that it would be ridiculous for there to be all these secrets that we haven't found yet sort of thing if i've ever played an rpg and i have that means he isn't i mean possibly you know um uh, so so you know he's he's around. Uh, you, <laughs> you came you came to um you came back from your your trip to uh, Madame Harani. So you're you're currently like in Bode City, um dealing with stuff. Omni, you have a deal to strike with Bosok to get that scrap 
for your ship that he has promised you. Um, and, uh, yeah. I want to see this ship up close at some point. I I've only seen it from afar. Yeah, me too. That's not true. You've obviously seen it from up close. You, you brought it here. Yeah, but I have to do Dave voice and be like, I still haven't found a picture of it. I was trying to in the pre-show. Oh, what, what's he called she again? She sent us a picture. Elf sent us a picture is, of our ship. It is the MC eighteen, MC dash eighteen. I think I think it's actually in our in our. I'm pretty our, sure our it's, in, it's in the Discord somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it might even be in the actual um in the new uh yeah wait I feel like she sent us a ship uh a ship picture that was in our handouts at some point I thought uh i didn't have one in the handouts so i'm pretty sure okay i was wrong then but there is definitely a picture of our ship mm -hmm. i googled i googled mc18 and it's a chemical called methoxy hang on i uh -oh. will i will find it mc18 moncal it's not in the book it's in the supplement mc18 light freighter here you go look this is what it looks like i've, I've just, i literally just googled mc18 mon calamari and i found a fucking image yeah i found it too okay so you but know I what it looks like <laughs> it's cute yeah it's like a little triangle a little, little, round boy. little bulbous triangle you know yeah. um which which is the the idea of it it's a it's about the size of millennium falcon um Yes. And uh, it it is yeah it looks it looks very practically shaped for a starship given that it is in Star Wars, um, so that's what we do on Mon Calamari. It has we make its, good shit. It has and its, good ships. It has its cockpit at the front. It has bulbous protrusions, Mon Calamari style, and it is like a, a deep triangle. What's the bit at the back? The the engines looks like a thorax. No, like neck in between the engines. It's like a little thoraxy looking bit. I don't know if you're looking at the same thing that I'm looking at. Hang on. Yeah. I like how we can like chill on this game. I feel much too pressured on the TNT channel one to just like what was a picture of it? I don't know. So hang on. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab an image of this and I'm gonna put it on I'm gonna put it on oh, that's not quite it. This is the one I want. You can put it in chat, everyone can look at it. No, okay. Okay. Sorry, this is this was unexpected. I thought Dave knew what their ship looked like, so I'm you know um here we go. So I'm uploading it. You will see a picture of it on the screen shortly. That is what it looks like. You see? See the ship? Like this. Like that one. Right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The back is, there's like engines, and then like underneath there's the like loading area and stuff. That's, yeah. I don't know what that big thing at the back is, but it's probably more engines for hyperspace, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like the other ones are like thrusters, and that one's Yeah, it's like, it's like uh, real space and hyperspace uh, engines. All those are broken. All of it's broken. It's, yeah, it's everything you see here is busted. <laughs> Like all the white all, areas all on that, that ship. All that you see, all that you see is broken. Yes, yes, correct. Um, so that's that's where you're at ship wise, uh, Dave. I think a lot hmm. of the I think a lot of the problems with it are not structural. You know what I mean? Like hull, there are no no like giant hull breaches or anything. But there's a lot of like the hyperdrive doesn't work and won't connect to the central computer and like the nav system is all scrambled and you know you need a new computer part or like what have you that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's your ship, so like I want you to be able to narrate about it, sort of thing. It is also a submersible. Yeah. That is correct. The MC-18 is capable of going underwater. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to do a bit where we go to a water planet and we go under and we like get in the suits and like walk across a seabed. That'd be sick. I mean, I got lots of stuff planned for that. That kind of. I I haven't changed the cameras on this screen. I've just realized. Hang on. Da, 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 while I move everything around. Um, but yeah, so like game plan wise, what are you guys thinking? Like from an out of character perspective before we sort of like jump into the like in character vibes. I don't want to jump the gun. 
Because you have a couple of things that are, like, on the docket and have been on the docket. Like, your boy Takata is going to come back around. <laughs> I feel mm-hmm. like, so we going? Oh. <laughs> Here's the thing. We did tell Takata that we'd call him when we were ready to start this mission. So unless he wants to come and actually start getting us annoyed by being so persistent. Like getting you annoyed? <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, hmm. I'm joking. I know he's in the in the he's the person in the position to be annoyed since he was his life was threatened. Um, sure was. We all did not anticipate that the training would take this long. Yeah, Keld and 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 uh, Kreiner were off somewhere doing something dramatic. Apparently, doing cool bounty hunter stuff. I mean, I expect blaster a fights. full montage when when. Uh, when Rhino does come back. Well, I mean, I, that's what I planned for today, but, uh, you know, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't meant to be. Uh, uh, we have the whole what are Keldon Crino up to part to look forward to in the future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. In a flip. Oh, yeah, Elf, do you want me to roll for Destiny? Uh, yeah, we need to do our various, density. Our various de- density rolls, indeed. Um. So if you could all roll me a force die, that would be wonderful. You're welcome, Elf. Thank you. Oh, no. Why would you do this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've, added the dark. I've added the one dark back. It's fine. Um, huh? Uh. Oh, I still have things in it. No, I, <laughs> I yeah, that, that, was, that, that was me. That was me, but I only need the force die. So that's another dark for me. Hooray. No, 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 it is, it it is, it is, Zyle, no, 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 Making up your dark bringing side Bringing balance roles. to the force. Bringing balance yeah. to the force, exactly. Oh, That's yeah. what a light side does. I also I have, bring balance. I also have to roll your obligation. Nobody's obligation hits today, because if it's above 45, it's nothing. Um, so no obligation, which means those those strain points that you had like on your threshold are not are not part of it anymore. So mm-hmm. you're good. Um, I was just stressed about maybe if something happened where I got in trouble, but I didn't. So Let's talk options, just because I want to do this from like a an mm. outside standpoint before we go into like a an inside standpoint. You have the meeting with uh, the Fog Wardens that you could go to. You have the Imperial base, the like levels two and three that you didn't check out um, that you could go back to if you wanted to. I think you mentioned to Bo Usak that there was like stuff to salvage that you couldn't get because um, mm-hmm. I remember you mentioning like the Bacta and stuff yeah um knowing where that is and and knowing that you can get at it is a good bargaining chip for like mabel you were saying like you wanted to help the fog wardens like healing or doctoring like stuff for them and Mm. and so on like that back to might be something to be considered for that um because you can't move it but maybe they can um but yeah you've got levels two and three of that place to check out um you could go back to the ruins if you wanted to like check out some more stuff there, but you've basically done 24 hours of you know walking around looking for things and uh, I gave you as much information as I basically could um, the last time. So I can't imagine that would be like hugely educational unless you brought the expert with you maybe. Um, other stuff, uh, you know that the Sunderer is out there somewhere and that Bowsock's working on a scavenging, uh, a scavenging operation for it. Um, and then that is going to be set up pretty soon to like go. Um, it may not be completely ready yet, but it's possible you could get like the location from him or, or what have mm-hmm. you and like go ahead of them. Um, and you've got all that information that you've got on your da- data pad, uh, Mabel, that you recorded from the ruins that you could use to, you know, talk to whoever you want about it. There are a lot of people who'd be interested in that kind of thing, uh, given that it is like real you know what i mean like the, yeah it's is, like new information it is provably verifiably a real thing uh, it's a little different than haverford being like i believe that they were like this you know with like no real pr- proof of it uh you know utica would be interested in knowing the the depths of the possible ruins uh the you know the <laughs> maybe the fog wardens want to know maybe our expert wants to consult but like how trustworthy is he all that kind of fun stuff you know there's a lot of there's a lot of that. So the three of you reconvene in uh Madame Harani's as per usual. And uh 
what's what's the game plan? I want to like leave it to you to discuss in character what your your vibes are. I mean, last time we covered something I really wanted to do, and discovered stuff that I mean I certainly found fascinating, but I know it was pretty dull and boring for you on me. Mm. Well. It was a society that was entirely built out of rocks, and I'm no geologist. Neither am I, but the uh, prospect uh, of becoming one isn't altogether uh, uh, un, uh, unappealing to me, if it means Ooh. I get to learn more about the road. We need to get you one of those little brushes and the... Honestly, an, an, an archaeologist kit wouldn't be a uh, terrible, especially not on Vogue. Seems like there's so many things to discover about all of this. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit rankled that we couldn't find the uh, the little thing that they hold. Um, but uh, enough about that. We still have plenty that we can learn about it, depending on uh, who it is that Mabel decides she wants to share that information with. Yes, well, we can maybe get help from one of the locals who's an enthusiast. Um, combine our notes and see what comes of it. And I'm sure he'd be interested in uh, compensating us for our work as well, which as it stands. Uh, and she kind of like gestures vaguely like credits are always useful. And as I all said, much rather going to somebody like that than having Utico turn it into a tourist destination, right? I mean, isn't it already too late for that? Like, they already turned some of it into a tourist attraction. The the moment we give them any kind of information, they're definitely going to see, you know, the credit symbol in their eyes. You know, That's what we don't give, give it to them. I mean, I think we can possibly give them the right people, anyway, bits and pieces of it. Some people are yeah. not motivated by the the need to get money from this. Some people, like me, are academics and uh, just want to know more about things. There's a there's a quiet hum of like activity around you in the way that like Madame Haranis is all, all, usually like conversation at like a reasonable level with like a little bit of background music kind of going on. Um, there are a couple of people in like Utico jumpsuits at one of the the tables, like having a drink and laughing, perhaps a little more loudly than uh, is polite. Um, there are the the, the white haired Wookiee lady is ever present, uh, just slamming drinks down and having a wonderful time uh, quietly on her own. Um, Madame Harani is like talking to her at the moment in like a sort of you know uh, hostess tone. Um, uh, Langlier's uh, up on stage, but he's not singing at the moment. He's like talking with his band while they're like playing some sort of like, uh, like looping sort of sort of like, um, uh, like background. Um, and uh, our our bartender with the like extra set of robotic arms is leaning against the bar. There's nobody like at the bar at the moment, um, uh, and she's just like cooling her heels at the moment, just to give you a little color. Yeah. Well, the longer we sit on this information, the more chance whoever else had already been there could make use of it before us, whatever we decide to do. So I think we might be best prioritizing following up on that. I agree. And I'm always inclined to trust a specialist, a freelance specialist, someone who has escaped the shackles of the society that held them down in the past and didn't appreciate their genius. <laughs> it seems oddly specific. Yeah, it was a reference to my own like backstory. Yeah, right. you, you've definitely had a similar sort of reputation to this guy, like, since you got here. People are like, you do a thing, and you do it okay, but you're kind of weird. 
you know, like you you repair stuff, and I guess that's fine. But... Sometimes repair it. Yeah. Sometimes do Did you feel like there are people who didn't acknowledge or accept your genius? Is that why you seen that Murphy? ship? I mean, seen I've that seen ship. it from I've seen it from afar. You still haven't taken me on a tour or anything. Can you even fly the thing? I mean, obviously you can't. You crashed it. <laughs> well, yes, that's why. Actually, I've been. Who making exactly... myself more social recently. Who exactly mm. are you expecting to fly that thing out of here when you fix it? No, no, I hadn't thought that far ahead. Gosh, if only you knew any pilot. I don't know that I do necessarily, so yeah, I'm, I'll probably have to look for somebody. I promise you probably don't have to look too far. You're being very cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Zyle just grins at you. Oh. Uh, I love playing a teenager again. It's fun. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what you mean. So, my feedback to the situation would be to visit this lovely Haverford fellow. Yeah, he's perfectly visible. He has a like an office on the third floor down. You gotta take like the turbo lift um through a couple levels of Boat City to get to it. But he has like a little, you know, uh experts shop slash office kind of thing. It sounds like everybody's on board. That's perfect for me. It's a little bit difficult sometimes to, you know, when Krino's here, it's just like, let's go out and blast something. And then we just follow behind, but when it's the three of us, we just, we can sit here all day. I do enjoy your company. Yeah, Mabel just kind of nods, much more uh, sedate without all the blaster fire. I mean, we still pretty go get him, even without, you know, the blasted stuff. I mean, I certainly am. Stands up. All right. Then let's go get him. Okay. We're gonna meet have for So I take it the party goes with. I don't want to interrupt any any scene that is happening. Uh, but I don't, you know. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you, you make your way out of uh, Madame Harani's and as usual, the corridors are, you know, you can see at least two droids at any, at any point in the corridor, like cleaning or uh, like the, I, I remember mentioning this, but I'm going to mention it again, just as a detail, the, the, the corridors are kind of curtained, you know, like hmm. along the sides, because you got to pull it aside to get it like the wires and the pipes and so forth. And they don't want to seal it off too, too heavily in case contaminants get in. Um, so everything is very like, it, it seems a little like um, plush, if you know what I mean, because of all the like curtaining. Um, is it um, just ceiling lights or is yeah, it floor yeah, stuff it's too? it's uh, it's ceiling lights, and then I think like along the edges of the bottom of the floor, you have like that emergency lighting almost, you know, like the yeah, kind of like I'm imagining it like uh, when you're on an airplane. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's that combination, and then there's like curtains to to separate you from the like crew quarters and stuff yeah although the curtains are along the sides rather than yeah like, yeah 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 exactly it's like that um and it is it is very clean it's like gray gray steel or like white you know imperial sort of architecture um the way it's like been designed is very is very austere but very like mm. clean um but so you're making your way along you get to the turbo lifts and you take a lift down um to the third floor things look relatively the same here it's clear that like there is no section of vote city that is like dirty or like like grimy or like left to its own devices because one of those sections could infect any section you know what i mean like if if the the containment is breached for like fungal growth and stuff it becomes annoying to get rid of um but you can see like uh many of the curtain sections are are removed and there are like windows into rooms behind them if you know what I mean, like sort of like an like an office block almost, where you have like offices that are like glass rooms, um, in in like a corridor, 
and the like the glass panel makes up part of the corridor and these are used as like shop front uh, displays or as like a business ad ad advertisement or as just like uh you know some of them are curtained from the inside for like privacy uh as you're like walking through um and you make your way to to one that that is like uh you know, ha have referred to historic antiquities or something like that. And, and it, it has like a big, like not neon, but like very bright sort of sign um, that clearly needs a little, a little spit polish to it. You know, like Haverford hasn't been, hasn't been keeping up the maintenance on the, on the lighting neon or what have you. Like one of the letters kind of like blinks a, a little. Um, oh, that's, that, that's my and, too. uh, and, and friends. so from the outside, you can see, that it is, it is sort of like it has that glass wall, and on the inside there are like shelves with some labeled, like oddities in it. Looks like pieces of ceramic or like uh, you know uh, things like that, like what rare quote unquote rare things from around the quadrant, you know, from around the the sector. Um, and uh, he's he's on the inside, and you can see him through the window uh, when you're when you're moving towards the the like entrance. And he's leaning on his on his desk thoughtfully with a data pad open in front of him. And you can see he's like this very old looking Bothan. Bothans are kind of like dog faced people. They have sort of like a like a muzzle, you know. Um, and he has like gray fur and like his hair, because they, they have like kind of a hairstyle kind of situation going on with like the, the long dog ears. Um, he has his hair is like white gray. Uh, and he has like this really big walrusy mustache, like at the front of his um, at the front of his like muzzle. Uh, and he he's got his hand like kind of in it while he's leaning in to to like watch the uh, data pad or like review whatever it is he's looking at. Uh, he also has a pair of glasses that are sitting like really deep back on the on his nose, like towards his eyes. Um, I love that him. Uh, that uh, are. It look like he's had them for a long time and there's like a chain you know on them to keep him around his neck if they like fall off his nose what have you um but he he's clearly doesn't get many customers you know like the the he looks like your average uh low traffic sort of like shop owner you know or like expert who doesn't expect their day to be interrupted by by people with actual curiosity you know one of those shops where you kind of like how is this staying in business? Yeah, exactly. It yeah, do it's like how does he how does he pay his rent? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, we, but uh, I'm, I'm super into it. Chat chats like he's animated oh, by Don privilege. Bluth. Yeah, you're on you're on the you're on the level, right? Like I think you're you're on the level. So I'm getting. But so yeah, he's he's inside, and you can enter through the sort of like sliding doors uh, on one of the wall panels. Yeah, and I think Mabel will like knock. Um, okay, so the trying door, to be polite. It's one of those like the doors open a little. He doesn't look up, and you just like rap on the side of the like sort of slightly open door. Mm -hmm. Um, he looks up and he sees the three of you, and he goes, uh, "Oh, oh, uh, uh, well, welcome, uh, to my what can I what can I help you with?" And he like stashes the data pad as if he doesn't want you to look at whatever's on it, like while he's. You know, uh, whatever he's been looking at, he sort of sits up a little, stands from his from his desk, and 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 walks around. And ba Bothans have like, I think they have the the like reverse knees. I'm not entirely sure, uh, like a uh, description, but they might they might actually no, I don't think so. It's a different species. Yeah, it doesn't look. They're like They're the regular. They're the regular like knee. But he but he he gets up and and like walks walks around the desk, um, and sort of stands, you know ready to help you with whatever it's like uh, i have all kinds of things from uh, all around the all around the, the sector uh you know uh, rare p pieces and, and very valuable yeah and his mustache <laughs> he, he like wiggles his nose and his mustache kind of twitches a little bit none of it looks very valuable by the way it's like broken pieces of ceramic or like a carving or you know or like a you know, a, a, a really old looking, like rusted pitted sword or, you know, what have you, that kind of stuff. It's like Omni respects the game, but they're playing different games. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. you. We we have the same <laughs> the same style. Yeah. 
And Dial just looks at Mabel. Going mid? Uh, well, and yeah, she like uh, pulls out her data pad and I think like looks around for like a table or a desk or something to set it on and maybe like moves he, a he, small object over. He sees that you're like you're like looking for a place to put it and sort of gestures you forward to the desk he was like using. Um, uh, you know, you probably have to brush some things aside, like you said, but he seems to like be like, oh, OK, yeah, sure. No. Yeah, so she kind of lays it out and like pushes some button that causes it to do like a little holographic display thing. Yeah, like a video, you know, and so video like, recording, yeah. An image pops up of like one of the statues or whatever that she documented. Um He he looks at it for like two seconds and then walks over to the the like curtain that would curtain like, close it as close, close, close. <laughs> the curtain that would like close the 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 shop front of you and like pulls it quickly and goes like where did you where did you find this what what i you know like and he seems like astounded you know like very surprised you know the old temple ruins i i, I yes of course can't leave there's more to them than her any of you expect it. I've been saying that for years. I haven't been able to find anything, but we, you know, we did find, and he, like, walks over to a shelf, and he shows you, like, this, like, piece of a ceramic pot or something that has, like, a spigot on it or something. You know, um, who actually found this? A couple of kids. Uh, I suppose the things, there have been weird, weirder things to happen, a strange coincidence that it'd be coming up now, but, uh, uh so you've, is there more? Is, is this a, a statue or it, is this one of them? You know, like he can't really determine whether or not you've like captured the image of a living Bodian and it's like seeing an alien, like quote unquote seeing an alien, you know what I mean? Like uh, like for for his level of belief that they exist, you know? And again, Zyle kind of gestures to Mabel. Yeah, and she like keeps scrolling through the various things. Um no signs of inhabitants. Any, not even any remains. No objects, but Just the building tank. itself still there. He's still intact. He's he squints and pushes his glasses up a little bit and and like leans into the hologram. So he's like inches from the hologram, you know. And push um, them up quite far because he's got a long muscle. Yeah, he's got a long like... nose, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and he and he peers he peers at it a little closer. Um. And when you're showing him the record, you just show him like the the recording, sort of in general, in like a fast motion mm -hmm. kind of way. Yeah. Um, when he sees the recordings of the like symbols that are like the language or what have you, uh, he goes like, "Oh, th this, this I've seen before." And 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 uh, like uh, goes over to his desk and like you know looks around for a for a paper or something, and he and he takes it out and he puts it down, and it looks like it's a charcoal rubbing or like a copy of a rubbing or something. Um, it's like on the the monument on the monument itself, like you you know at the top of the the, the stump with all the liquid. Uh, they're they're very faint, but there are there are symbols on it that look just like this. Uh, and and he shows you the the thing, and it's clear that it's like the same sort of uh like language, or the mm. same sort of like symbology. And he says, "I've been working uh very very a bit." Uh, tirelessly you know and you you saw him like two seconds ago basically just like watching taking YouTube, a nap watching yeah. youtube or whatever on his day you know on his data pad I mean, tirelessly to translate these symbols and i think there is an element that we are missing uh when it comes to their communication something that we are maybe not capable of or we don't know about uh the symbols themselves repeat quite often but they can't possibly all be the same you know like thing it's not a but mantra could it be this object? Uh, what 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 are you referring to? Uh, I uh, I guess I would show him the picture of the the indentation that's in the the oh oh yeah the he, he he looks at it. Um, I I came up with that one. That was my conjecture. He looks, I, I he looks at it. Contributed. And says, <laughs> no, no, I I don't, I don't think I've never seen anything like that. But I I don't trust me. Neither way. Think so. The statues are very interesting. I I don't understand the posture. You know what I mean? Like he has a couple of the same questions that you have. Um, but mm -hmm. he's like, no, no. I think 
the language has to do with color, I think. You know, like the original carvings would have been pig pigmented or or they saw uh, more colors than we see or, or something like that. You're, you're denoting tone through uh, through tincture, as it were, through through uh, uh, the, the manner by which it is seen. But these things wear off after time or, you know, are, are not distinguishable to certain instruments, what have you. And we've never heard the language spoken. There's no spoken recordings of any of this. So it's hard to say how that would translate. You know, it, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> oh, yes, tone through tones, so to speak, uh, color-wise. Uh, I, I know this because some of the pigmentation was left on uh, the ceramic. Uh, he, like, goes to, like, look for a specific object that's clearly not on his shelf. Like, he's not selling this or yeah, like not presenting it stuff not presenting sold. it as fact and he, he brings it out and it looks like um it looks like a garment almost like a like one of the um like the same pattern that was on the skirts like at the bottom or on the like uh like cloaks or what have you there's this like sort of pattern that looks like the language a little bit uh, but on this ceramic like some of it is like red turning orange and some of it is like purple and it like goes around in in like separate symbols of different like colors the symbols look very similar but the colors are very different um and he's like uh this one very well preserved you know i have a atmos i think atmospherically you know like sealed like a tomb or something um but i uh, couldn't find the rest it's just kind of uh Bit of a, see, bit of a uh, uh, luck, really, to find something like this. And nobody will fund my archaeological expeditions because they think this is a useless endeavor. <laughs> you know, he, he's just like rambling. I have, I have, a, I have a question because you know, at this point, we've shown him quite a few recordings and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, are there any pigmentations that are in the the preserved like statue? statues or or any of the not things that as recorded? not as far as you could see uh and if it's paint like it would have oxidized a long time ago or like okay. you know like disappeared but the the um the thing that he does mention when you're talking about the language is that there are a couple of the recordings that look a little different like the way that it is written is a little different or you know it, it seems like a different set of symbols almost like I, it doesn't quite match up with the rest of the language um and he's like oh uh, this this right here this is very interesting because I think, you know, like many languages that have, a, uh, like, a, a symbology uh, uh, that matches with the imagery, um, there's probably a way that they do it, um, you know, informally as well. There's, like, a, a formal language, uh, you know, like, for, for his, historical documents, written documentation, what have you. Uh, then there's probably, you know, like, a more casual... Not everybody's going to speak, you know, the... The, the emperor's common, as it were, uh, you know, the basic of the same language. Uh, uh, <laughs> and it looks like well, this voice is very hard to do because it <laughs> makes me want to cough, but... Uh, <laughs> there, uh, I don't know that feeling. I kind of want to sneeze sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, the, 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 it looks like the, um, the, the other set of symbols is uh, maybe less based on the... The coloration, you know, it's, they have they have different symbols before some of the symbol the, the the similar ones, you know, that like this thing that looks a little bit like a Z with a squiggle through it. Uh, so there's a, essentially an there's, evolution of the language. Well, there's a, there's like a denotation before it, and then you see a different denotation before it next time and next time, and maybe that's a way that they you know they don't have to. Like in their recordings, they don't have to color them. They have a denotation of the color. Maybe. I, it's a theory. Oh, like... <coughs> like Excuse me. Uh, stage directions. Whispered. Uh, is, uh, in uh, red. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, uh, very much so, I think. Yes. Uh, you know, like, uh, to, to quickly uh, express an idea rather than having to you know, write it and then paint it or what have you. It's, it's like a... Probably a different kind of, you know, communication entirely. And he, he seems to be just, like, wildly speculating. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, absolutely. Even so, 
uh, Zyle is over here, galaxy braining. Um, so it's <coughs> fine. Uh, it's all very fascinating. Um, but I think I think ultimately, like one of the things we were really curious about is this artifact that it appears they may have been holding. Uh, that seems to have been central to their culture. Yes. Yes, I think all the statues all standing the same way. Do do any of the statues do they do they repeat at all? Or the same statue in any other places, or uh, you know, like a, to denote a specific thing, or or a, a I think it was honorific? One that was holding or... a sword. Hmm. I mean, he like re he like takes slides the data pad over and sort of like rewinds or like forwards it if Mabel lets if um. Mabel lets him. Um. To yeah, try and, like, she'll find, let him find what you're talking about. Muck about with it, yeah. Um, she's fine with that. So he like he like rewinds it a little, finds the the image with the sword, and goes like, Ooh, "That one is uh, is slightly different than, than the others. Uh, larger too, from the perspective that I'm seeing. Am, am, am I correct? Yeah, it's huge. Oh, pretty big. Uh, you know, I've never. This is a little overwhelming. I've never seen a depiction of a, a native Vodian before. Uh, interesting to think that they were. Plantoid or or fungal in origin themselves, or considering well, the nature of a planet. I feel like that's probably uh, not completely out of the realm of possibility. That's something like something evolutionary like that would happen on a planet like this. Probably the best way for them to survive would be to evolve from the actual uh, foundations of uh, what this planet. He nods, like, emphatically and goes, I agree with you entirely. Very hostile ecosystem. Need to live within it, you know, and things spring from, you know, their origins for a reason and, and remain uh, you know, with sentience as a top of the, you know, the, the chain of uh, consumption for, uh, you know, their adaptability, mostly. Uh, um... I'm there not... seem to be at least some degree of control somehow over the stones and the dirt that they lived in. Hmm. The doors, no buttons, no levers, no handles. Yes, we had like... to pry them open. Yeah, and he like four fast forwards through the, the, the recording as you're talking, like not looking at you, like they're trying to absorb as much of this as possible. Um, and it's like, oh, yes, yes, I see. Uh, uh, crowbars, and uh, at least you were delicate. Huh? Or as delicate we as you could be. be. We tried to be. Yeah, it's not like we tried to explode our way in. No, no. That would have been foolish. You know? Yeah, <laughs> foolish. Lose, lose <laughs> valid, <coughs> valuable <coughs> data that way. Uh, no. who, who, and he turns to Mabel and, and sort of goes like, who else have you shown this to? She, like, shrugs a little bit. No one. Oh, uh, first port of call. How wonderful. I, I, uh, it proves a lot of my theories. You know? uh, solid evidence of a civilization that existed uh, before uh, any of us were here. She nods. I have a question. If, if it's possible, like you said, that they communicated with color as part of their language, like at least their written language, mm. would color have been part of their spoken language as well? Did they perhaps speak in 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 a color spectrum as opposed uh, to just like verbal? Like, like growing and changing their coloration yeah. of their plants. Like there were plenty with spoke. flowers and buds. Mm, I see. I see on the statues. Yes, yes. Uh, it's possible. I I know that there are many languages out there, and I I know quite a few. He says as if he's like real proud of himself. You know what I mean. Um, uh, that, uh, the written is very different from the verbal, you know, but in theory, if we were to extra extrapolate that they have color in their documentation, in their, in their history, then there must be some way that, they, that, that is represented in their speech or in their communication to each other. I mean, we have... We have species that we know of who have as delicate uh, communication, Twi'lek with the Leku movement, uh, twitches and slight differences in posture. Uh, there are a great many things that uh, 
are difficult to discern for creatures that are not of the same species as the one communicating. It takes a lot of... Of course. They wore ceremonial masks because they didn't communicate through facial gestures. It would have been the colours. The colours that being plantoid in nature and plenty with foliage and uh, Ad- adornments one, often, one could say personal growth of some sort yes i see that here in the statues. change color Myths to... were a big part of what they did yeah it's actually really quite brilliant only yeah uh, yeah i mean right, chat also brings up that bothans have a specific like fur flaring method of communication between other bothans like a very particular delicate communication method um Mabel, at this point, uh, just kind of says, like, yes, this is all very fascinating, and um, this information is uh, obviously very revelatory, and uh, I will be selling it to the highest bidder. Uh Uh-huh. And she, like, pulls a data pad back, like, switches it off and puts it back in her coat. He, like, hesitates, obviously. He's like, uh, 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 stammers a little bit, as a man with a walrusy mustache might. Um, And, uh, and says, uh, uh, highest, highest bid, so you're going to sell it to Utico, then? I don't think there's a higher bidder on the planet. And she just kind of, like, tilts her head and does a little shrug as if, like, oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, I'd be prepared to offer you uh, some for it. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I don't have his pockets as deep as they do. <laughs> you know, like, uh... Kind of admitting that if that if you're saying truthfully that you're going to sell it to the highest bidder, that he doesn't have a stake in it because there's no way he can pay as much. Um, but he says like, I, I mean, know. I'm just, I'm just, fucking. I know, you know I know. You're I'm just, just like, messing with him just, to get him to pay me more. You're just going for it. He's like, uh, yeah. I could, I could come up with a, a, a sum. Um, Zyle, did you show him the mask at all during this conversation? Um, we did retrieve the mask. I think that. Because you it's have very it, right? possible. Yeah. yeah, I'm very. I think it's very possible that what Zyle has done is actually drawn a recreation of it, uh, in order to like kind of carry that around to people to see. But the actual mask in and of itself is probably very back in their back in their room and, somewhere. Yeah, and hidden in their room. Um, yeah, that's fair. Um, <laughs> we could be like, there's even more information. So we he, have he, an he, artifact. he says, uh, I'd be willing to pay you. Uh, Let's see. Uh, I have to do my accounting. Got to make sure I can pay for this place next month. And you know, he's like, he's like digging out his life savings. You know what I mean for this like confirmation of his theory. Uh, I mean, when you're a scientist, as he, uh, as he like, uh, and he clearly doesn't want you to sell it to Utica, right? Because it's like it will change the tenor of the entire conversation moving forward mm-hmm. if they if they have it. Um, I don't so, exactly want Utica to have it either. So he. Uh, <laughs> Not just up to Zyle. He like breaks out a data pad that like when it op- when he opens it up, you can see is like his books, if you know what I mean. Like he's scanning through sort of like accounting material, um, all the while sort of like twitching his mustache in the occasional like oh, like dismay almost or like consideration. You can see him like thinking basically, um, and he eventually like takes a data chip out of it and goes like, "I am willing to pay you uh, collectively." Obviously, but if you're all trying to sell it to me, I don't know, it's one price. Uh, 5,000 credits for the entirety. That's that's everything I can offer. But I promise I'll do more good with it than any company could. Uh, yeah, so Elf, can I uh, make a negotiation roll here you, and, you and press him for some more? So um, Mabel just says, well, certainly you can't pay uh, in credits for the full value but your knowledge certainly has worth and your ability to interpret and uh expand upon this data and draw information out of it is very valuable to us as well so an arrangement in which you pay us certainly but then continue to work with us and ongoing uh, and give us access to your research on an ongoing basis i think would be amenable and she like looks to her colleagues for confirmation as she's saying this but essentially i want to push him <laughs> Zyle. big Zyle, big eye and just like yes i don't want to be cut off from whatever is going on here i want to know more about this place 
as much as possible. Like if they could psychically send that to Mabel, <laughs> but yeah. It, uh, yeah, yeah. hopefully it's written all over their face with the big, big eyes. And Wait, just Mabel, like, Mabel, is, the force Mabel, Mabel is probably <laughs> quite adept at, at communicating non-verbally with living humanoids. You know. Yeah, I mean? she's had a lot of practice, yeah. so I she's do not learned. Yet have the ability to psychically connect with people. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if we have the like PC uh, to PC uh, secret language secret thing language. going quite yet. Uh, okay, so but... I've set you a difficulty. I'm gonna give you a circumstantial boost because he wants to say yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I feel like we've set teed him up pretty he wants good to here. Say yes, you've done really, really well. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna spend a force point as well. Okay, so you yeah. want to uh, upgrade your roll? Let's, okay. let's boost you as well because we both very yeah, much want, want you to succeed at this uh, i only one of you can can offer help deeply invested yeah. um so we'll go another boost die for deeply invested and make your negotiation roll mabel <laughs> a failure <laughs> are you freaking kidding me so, his, dice. His i'm so good at rolling advantages and so bad at rolling successes his it's great i think his reply is uh oh sorry i didn't you guys didn't see but the role is was this there's a lot of advantages uh but i think the this like you could use those advantages to boost someone else's role to try and like you know negotiate with them another way like charm or what have you um but he he's gonna his reply to your negotiation is like well if i'm paying so much for the data then if, if <coughs> i may say if, if I may interject. Uh, of course. Um, listen. I understand that this is worth a lot to you. Uh, you you didn't you didn't let me finish, uh young uh whatever you are. Uh <laughs> it doesn't have experience with chess. Um because uh if I pay you so much for the data then uh I, I could share what I learn uh given a little more financial leeway um uh with the entire thing you know if i'm going to pay you a little less then i'll be a little less worried about keeping up my deadlines and thus can spend the idle hours informing you of what i find uh whereas uh, if i'm paying you everything that i have uh, it will be a desperate scramble to make sure that i am uh well, desperate gamble in, in fact that would be a slightly better way of putting it yeah, I perhaps, feel like. perhaps so yes perhaps yeah. so well what if you had an assistant are you offering to help me interpret all of this data? What are your qualifications for such? Are you trained in uh, xenology or, or uh, alien I am. languages? I am. Or... I, I am actually trained in, in xenology. Uh, before I left my home world, I was, well, I was hoping eventually to be someone like you uh, for the galaxy and other cultures. And I'll tell you, exactly. I'll tell you what. I can pay you the full 5,000 if you leave me be. But uh, otherwise, we'll go down to four, and uh, I'll share what I know, and you're welcome to help me. Zyle kind of looks at Mabel. Um. Okay, okay, so I rolled all these advantages, and now if you said that I could you can use spin them, those into helping someone. You can use them to add boost die to like the next person's roll or, or what have you. Would it be fair to say that Zyle's uh, impassion? I think there's a charm attempt here. Yeah, for like sure. I but feel like I just wanted to provide you with the like. If you don't roll, this is your option. Yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. If Zyle does the whole like pretty please, then like yeah. maybe I we mean, can, you know. But I'm perfectly willing to work for free, and honestly, all that matters to me is that you know this information is is properly compensated to the person who works so hard to get it for you. And, 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 and all of this for me is just, you know, frosting on the cake. So currently we are at three boost die because we've got the boost die for him wanting to say yes. The boost die for Mabel boost dying from the previous advantage. And also like help from Omni or, or what have you, I assume, that is that is coming in. Um, and we also have, two, it's a difficulty of two purple. So it's the same difficulty as it was. There's another boost die. Get on, get on, get on. I'm ready. Here we go. We all know how well I roll. 
No. Neutral. Oof. The failure. <laughs> you, so I think I think there's a moment of like you impassionately, and it's clear that he feels something about that. You know what I mean? Like he has, he, you know, you can see in his eyes that there's some feeling about like you being interested in the thing he's interested in. You know, like you being a younger member of a field that he's been in for many years. Um, and I think he says, uh, as much as I would like to, you know, capitulate to your request, uh, I think my demands, uh, stand, uh, as it were, uh, slightly less for, uh, uh, your assistance and the freedom of the information for the rest of you. That is That's assuming when, that yeah. you don't sell it to anyone else, uh, that would be disastrous for me. That's when Zyle turns the puppy eyes on Mabel. <laughs> yeah. Um, and because I don't think Zyle knows or there was any communication beforehand, but like uh, for Mabel, she would never want to sell it to Utico. She was just using that as it's a leverage, bargaining, but, bargaining position, but yeah. did not make that clear to anyone else so that no one would ever undermine the threat that she had no, for that the purpose sense, of negotiation. Yeah. Um, and so she still is going to make a bit of a big deal of like Humming being gracious yeah. to Zyle just to kind of mess with Zyle a little bit. She's <laughs> like, Oh, very well. Okay. It's my young friend here, and she indicates Zyle, is just very enthusiastic, and it would mean so much to them uh, that... Uh... He, he he sort of smiles. Uh, the, ba the Bothan smile is very, like, muzzle-like, you know what I mean? They have, like, a very, <laughs> like, toothy smile. Uh, he sort of smiles and, and, and says, uh, oh, very well then, a, a deal's a deal. Uh, and he, like, trades the credit chip out for a different one as if he's like changing the the amount you know like puts it into his data pad like changes something and then takes it out and hands it over to you mabel mm. um sort of expecting the data pad or the recordings back um uh a and, copy of them at least yeah uh and uh and he looks at Zyle and he says like uh, it's very rare you know young ones uh being interested in what came before uh so dedicated to their uh, their craft you know uh well, they... i can't can't help but be slightly impressed by that uh dedication well, there's just so much i don't know and uh, the more uh, i can learn and you will find you will find my friend that uh, there's always uh, so much more you don't know once you've discovered the thing you think you know very exciting. And, uh, so yeah. It gives you a little nod and, you know, like, uh, it gets the, gets the trade from Mabel. I don't know if Mabel, like, hands over the original. Yeah, she, or... she gives a copy. Yeah, um, that's what I figured. I think she just, she doesn't have, like, a disc. She has to, like, upload it directly to yeah. his system. Yeah. Like, there's definitely a protocol for doing something like handing something over and making the original file or that copy uncopyable or whatever like mm -hmm, that. yeah i mean like because he his agreement with you is that you not sell it to anybody else right so he's yeah he's definitely like uh interested in what happens to the original as well um but but yeah he he seems satisfied with it and he goes like there's a lot to go over i mean we only looked at a small portion and in fast motion i have to go through your entire track uh you know, a little more ploddingly uh it's going to take me some time obviously, before I have anything further to add. But what I will say is uh, I'm looking for things like repetition or uh, con context clues or, or, or things that might, you know, might might be applicable in that manner uh, language-wise. But uh, seeing figures, statues, or, or whatever they are of, a, of, a, like, of the Vodian people, that's a, that's a, revel yeah. it's a revelation. When exactly should I come round again? Uh, I'll, I'll send a calm message for you. Give me your, your frequency, and I, it's very, very simple. Dial does um, that. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he, he has what looks like a, like a, like an 80s telephone, you know what I mean? Like in the office that, you know, could, could be his, like, office calm. Yeah. Uh, I would feel it remiss not to mention, however... We do believe that somebody else is at least aware of these ruins. There's a very rudimentary stare 
He furrows he furrows his bushy Bothan brows, uh, and and like thinks okay. a moment, taps his taps his chin, you know. And says, Two like, individuals. Uh, I was scanning for life forms so, at somebody, the time. So somebody somebody saw you go in, or or noticed. Do you know? Do you know whom? Uh, they must have been there before us, or. The first time we got there, they saw us, then they went down, and then they set it up by the time we went there again. As I'm sure you're very familiar with conjecture. Of course, uh, yes. You know, we're not entirely sure. No, no, no. We don't know who it is that they caught us out. I don't, I can't think of anybody on the planet who would set a primitive snare to try and, you know, if it was the it was the company if it was Utico then then you you'd have armed guards or what have you I don't think they'd be you know any delicate like that uh <coughs> so uh I suppose I'll keep it in mind and if anybody seems to know a little bit more than they should then I will uh address that uh back to you uh let us in know theory yes it uh, seems significant. Even to somebody like me, he actually he's, uh, doesn't really care. He's already much. got the like copy open on his on his like the the hollow projector that is like in his uh store, like a bigger one, you know, like kind of a TV rather than a data pad, uh, as it were, and uh, and like clicks it on, and there's like a bigger version of the recording, you know, like he can go through it in more detail. It's got that like blue blue white hue of ho- that holograms do in Star Wars, uh, mm-hmm. as he as he goes through it and looking. It's like when a game trailer drops and you get super invested and you start going through it frame, yeah, by, frame, frame by frame to see yeah. if you can it's, like work it, things it's out. Clear, it's clear. It's clear that he's gonna go through like you know each of the nameplates and like try and find like you know the same one or like different stuff. He he's gonna comb through this like uh, in a religious fashion. He is he is very dedicated to his craft and it's clear that this is very validating for him. Like his posture is very like affirmative even though he's just paid a great deal of money out you know for for this for this kind of thing it's clear he's like enthusiastic about it um it's it's a significant amount of money as well i was looking at what we could buy it is we could buy a land speeder you could yeah i feel like this i feel like this is one of those things where we don't split it up amongst the party it's we we put this towards something big that we can all all use it's in like a, a fund yes exactly. all right well i will note I will put it in my Make sure notes to note it down, yeah, because it exists. As I have yeah. said, it is up to you, the players, to record anything player related. I say stuff what? and then I forget about it. You know what I mean? Um Elf. Okay, four thousand yeah. credits. What uh what type of currency does he pay us in? Um what type of currency would you like? I think he's one of those people who could pay you in Utico chip, but it could also pay you in like Imperial credits or or what have you. Like I'm sure he has like a variety, as it were. Tiny rocks. Shiny rocks. Bull caps. No, that's I think, ridiculous. I think uh, for Mabel's part, she would be interested in getting currency that was uh, more transferable, like for if we wanted to get off planet. Oh, you want to keep it. like like a bank account for once you get out of here? Sort of and thing? I feel like, yeah, having this, given that this is like group money, it would make sense to have it be our yeah, like... Yeah, you want to you wanna our... get it. You want to in get our it in, go bag. You want to get you it know, in like, for when we in, like yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll like set up like a, a bank account or whatever sure. for it. Yeah, I mean, you get it. Then you get it in like imperial credits, which is the standard for this like sector before people mm-hmm. started like you know separating things. It's it's the euro to the lira or the whatever you know what I mean kind of, yeah. kind of thing. Um, uh, which will will get you far in certain parts of the galaxy. For sure. Definitely more so than Utico. Yeah, certainly more transferable than Utico credits. Though buying stuff here, stuff will cost more if you pay Imperial. If you know what I yeah. mean? Like, that's just the way it is. Um, cool. No, that's good. So, I think, uh, unless you have anything else to say to Haverford, uh, or any other com- conversations you want to have with him, this might be a great place for us to take our break. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, reassess what we'd like to do with the next... Uh, next half of the episode now that you've had this wonderful conversation and uh, that was a fun NPC to play <laughs> um, it was but, sick I want to yeah. kiss his little so, um, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes my dear friends don't go anywhere um, and we'll continue with some more Star Wars Desperate Campbell in just a couple of minutes bye hello everyone and welcome back to the sixth episode of Desperate Gamble um 
our party has just exited, uh, or is just exiting the office of one Haverford, uh, his ancient historian uh, expert, and uh, his uh, Haverford's, uh, you know, antiquities uh, location. Uh, the curtains are still closed, and it's clear that they're going to be closed for a while. He even, like, comes out behind you sort of thing and, like, switches the sign to, like, you know, not open, like, like closed for the day or what have you, uh, uh, as if he wasn't home. Um, cause he's going to get straight to work. So I was practically vibrating as they, they leave the room. And as soon as they're kind of clear and the door is closed, uh, they kind of like just sort of, they might launch themselves at Mabel and like <laughs> give her a really big hug. Like kind of, it's, it's sort of awkward. Um, but at the same time, it's also very like, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, and Mabel has just like gone very stiff and like held their pose, not knowing how to react to like being hugged. And then once you're done, they like take your shoulders. Or she like takes your shoulders and like sets you back like one pace from how close you were uh, and leaves one hand on your shoulder. Uh, yes, well, um, yes and like nods it's just that you've been really brilliant like through this whole thing and and uh and i understand how how important it was for you to know more about this place too but thank you for for making sure that i i had the opportunity to learn more too um i, I really appreciate it. well you seemed very excited about it and also this way he doesn't run off with our data and do something foolish he definitely, yeah. he definitely seems like the type to do foolish things for knowledge. You know what I mean? Like he, <laughs> he is like your typical, uh, slightly off kilter archaeologist historian. If you know what I mean. I'm really excited to learn more from you, and uh, to tell you all what it is we discover. Um, but I couldn't have done it without you. Um, thank you. You're very welcome. I am also here, and I also helped. <laughs> yeah, and maybe we'll like take this as an opportunity to deflect attention and be like, "Yes, yes, Omni was uh, very instrumental in securing all of this." I had of course, a crowbar and, and a rope. The right tools for the job, very important. And she like passes <laughs> attention to Omni and like. Yeah, I, the, I think we spent enough time together that that was kind of a like. Yeah, it's getting a bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. cool. Uh, is there, like, where's the party headed a after having made, like, these 4,000 Imperial credits uh, and, like, you banking them away? So All right, like... it's only 4,000. How yeah. sad. Yeah, sorry. Well, just my notes. I feel like we've got me covered. Uh, but I feel like uh, Omni's kind of taken... Uh, taken one from the team a few times here, and uh, maybe maybe it's time you show us your ship. Yes, I want to see uh, it. I want to know what exactly needs to be fixed on it. What sort of medical facilities does it have? Uh, uh, none, I'm sure. I'll need to make improvements like. and plans. Uh, show us oh the my. ship. Show us the ship. Show us the ship. All right, but you've got to promise if you ever see any Republic officers looking for a ship like this, that I purchased this from a wholesaler <laughs> legally. Sure. Well, Perfect. it seems perfectly logical to do. I mean... yeah. I'm, I'm, I have no experience at all with lying to the authorities. All right, fantastic. It's down there. Oh, I've got a deal with a scrap maker and a bunch of credits now, so maybe we can see what we can do. You gonna stop by Bowie Sock on your way? Hell yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, making your way back up to the the like top level of Ode City. Um, 
there's the the sort of like marketplace on the way out uh that that is it's like on the way in and the way out the large corridor is like lined with market stalls you know as as like a like a trap so to speak you know it's like a good place mm-hmm. for for merchandise that's um, prime real estate yeah and and you make your way to bowie sock stall and he's he's still there he he's on like a calm call with someone like he's got his calm link in front of him like no 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 we need to you know and as you walk up he sort of goes like i'll call you back and like you know like puts it away uh and and turns to the group and says welcome back uh what what is it uh what is it I can do for you? Well, my companions here have impressed upon me that they would like to see my ship. And as such, I think it might be a good opportunity to do some repairs, if you remember our deal. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, I, I'll have the, the pallet shipped down to you at the 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 uh, landing platform uh dragging it through the hallway would be a big pain in the butt and also oh, they're they're yeah. coming from the station so you know do you want me to do you, do you want me to just send you an assortment or would you prefer that i uh you know take a look myself and go you know, like oh, more specific no 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 i i'm an expert on these don't worry um if there's any specifics outside of a, a general assortment then um, we can renegotiate. Yeah. I have come into some extra spending money. Well, always good to know that my required. always good to know that my friends and associates have a, a sizable pocketbook at their availability. Uh, he's sort of like uh, you know. Mabel leans in and just says, "They don't have a sizable <laughs> amount of money at their disposal. It's not their money." Alrighty then. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Jawa looks the Jawa looks a little bit nonplussed, you know what I mean? Like not sure what to do about that. He's he, they were just like being friendly. Um and so he said he says like uh get yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll get a ship down to you at the landing platform. Uh should arrive, you know, next hour or so. No problem. Um That's uh, great. I I'll get on I'll get on the horn to my people up on the button. The button being the space station. Yeah. Uh Ooh, a- anything else I can sell you? Uh, you know, scanners, goggles. Uh, I don't know, gra- grappling hooks. Uh, uh, this very nice hyperspace. Uh, you know, condenser. Uh, I don't know. I got lots of stuff. I think for now, um, I'll see what I can do with this. These bits and bobs, as they say. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, 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 go ahead. Uh, I got stuff to do anyway. And he like turns around as if it's like, oh, well, you're not going to buy anything, so it's cool. Like I'll, you know, get stuff. Waste of his time. Yeah, waste, yeah. Of, waste of my time. Um, Does and, he have like other customers? Uh, his stall often, isn't often, like, or is his, he pretty? His stall isn't like super popular. It's clear that he's like a specialist in terms of if you know mm. what salvage is, you can get the right pieces for the right. It's like a guy who sells lawnmower parts. You know, like. If you're not a yeah, lawnmower, if you're not a lawnmower repair man, you're not gonna know what a, that that valve is, why it's worth that much, or yeah. Or but if whatever. you find a machine thing in the jungle, you bring it back, and you're like, "Is this worth anything?" And then he takes like a ninety percent discount. Yeah, he, off he, you. I was gonna say he always tells you no, but that he'll buy it to do yeah. you a favor. Yeah, exactly. And Absolutely. and I yeah. mean, you guys know that he's trying to currently like trying to marshal enough people to salvage a star destroyer. You know, like that's his that's he's his busy. that's busy his busy current boy. hustle. So it's like customer or not, he's got other stuff he needs to be doing, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and secretly as much as possible, right? Um, so he he you hear him like get back on his comm link when you're when you're leaving and he's talking in some kind of like vague code like you know like words to replace words that you can tell are definitely like not what he's actually talking about that kind of stuff. Um and uh to so to Big get Big cheese the wedge. <laughs> yeah, the wedge. Uh so so to get down to your landing platform, you need to go outside obviously. Uh so you do the whole like Grab your rebreathers, go through the 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 disinfectant spray, and uh, make your way down the landing platform. And your ship down there, Omni, is covered in this gigantic sort of like tarp, almost. So it's like a a, a triangle sort of wedge shaped, like a like like we were saying, um, uh, ship that's like covered in this big sort of like 
blue, you know, tarp to keep like stuff off of it. Um, the platforms are well tended to. There are like laser fences around them to like keep growth from like getting at them. The ship has been like sprayed with with like disinfectant. You know, there are like landing attendants who you know to like th- let you into the dock because it's your ship. You know, and you have like the you landed it here. You have the registration for it. That kind of thing. It's like fairly. Yeah, so, I fairly- have- some sort of registration. Yeah, it, it was an, it was it was enough. Like it was enough that they they were just like, yeah, you own this. You know what I mean? Maybe you had to bribe them slightly, kind of. Yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So they they it's clear that this place is like secure in terms of if you landed a ship here, somebody couldn't just walk up to it if they didn't own it, kind of thing. Um, so you make your way up, and there's this yeah this like Millennium Falcon sized wedge shaped ship covered in a tarp in front of you. On this well, like, hexagonal landing pad. Here she is. And I only say she because it's, it's actually just a spaceship. I say just I mean, a spaceship much, is the greatest spaceship here. There's not much to her. I mean, she's under a tarp. Maybe they can see her. Oh, that's because at some point I'm hoping to dramatically pull it off once <laughs> the whole thing is finished. But for now... Uh, if we go inside? Just... I mean, the real reason that there's a tarp over it is so that it doesn't get like airborne spores all over. You know, yeah, the dust no, and it's spores just... all over. But I just, thought, just you messing. know, just wanted to mention. Uh, yeah, still yeah. go inside there, even with the tarp on it. No, we won't be able to see much from like the cockpit or whatever. No, uh, it should be fine. But uh, the the ramp wasn't damaged or anything in the descent. Uh, all right, but just bear in mind, it's a work in progress, all <laughs> right? It's not my best. I'm... Clearly, Omni has a bit of a thing of being like, all right, I don't... it's a bit of a perfectionist thing, weirdly, despite how totally laissez-faire is about everything well you else. care about your ship you know what i mean like care it's, about a, my yeah, ship. it's a valuable piece of technology that you want to make work again just I guess. awkwardly care about it so well. uh how do you open the like the gantry the like the ramp or what have you like do you have like a remote for it or is there a button you know um yeah 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 um at the moment uh i try and do it on my pad like my day pad yeah I like, tap a button a few times. You get like a broadcast error or something. Like the re- <laughs> yeah, the, the, the re- doesn't the, work. The I'm receiver like... on the inside is not quite functioning correctly, and it doesn't pick up the data pad signal. Yeah, try and try like slay a pad that we, way. Do we need your crowbar? <laughs> oh no, the button on the side works fine, and I kind of like stand on my tiptoes a little bit and like jump and like hit the emergency yeah. thing on the side. The button. Yeah, there's like a bulb. Uh, there's a bulbous one of those like bulbous Mon Calamari like outcroppings that functions as like a button. Uh, you you hit it and there's a slight like hissing noise as the gantry like comes down. And there's that uh, in all Star Wars spaceships for some reason. There's like a like a weird uh, like white steam or something that comes out to the sides of the the ramps when it when it descends. Gotta have the weird white steam ejectors yeah, yeah, by your I ramp. I don't know. It's yeah. just a thing it's that, regulations. It's the thing that Star Wars does. Um, and uh, board? yeah, and comes down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me let me show you uh, what's going on here. Uh, the do mind the responses permission granted. Oh, okay. So you clearly are a pilot. You know all the pilot <laughs> lingo. Fantastic. All right. Um, permission granted, but only after me. Uh, watch your steps here. Um. Because the plate isn't fully welded on, it might just fall. Um, yeah, the it's a little bare bones. I've had to get to all the wiring and things, so please don't touch anything. <laughs> partly because I'm very precious about this, and partly because you might electrocute yourself, especially Mabel. Yeah, and she seems kind of like taken aback, like especially Maple. And she like looks around. It's like Zyle would die of electrocution just yeah. the same. <laughs> like, yeah. 
so I think leading them up uh and the, the the main the main start of it is a bit of a corridor. Um Yeah, there's like a landing area, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You head up into a, a small kind of cargo area. Um I think the interiors are all very, you know, kind of matching the the round aesthetic. There's no kind of um So you got like a lot of ovals kind of Yeah, and like no edged corners. It's all yeah kind of slightly sweeping around. Um but at the moment, uh, like the shape is there, but most panels are missing. Um, like there, there'll be sections of white wall, but then like, then like areas yeah. that you'd expect like a com thing on there to just it's just missing. It's like hanging off some wires just precariously. Um, but I think the inside. Um, Do you want to? While you're describing it, Dave, do you want to draw us a shitty map of it? Because we could go to a plain white, you know, like a plain. You could do like a floor white. plan, yeah. at least. Yeah, you could do a floor plan and then get the Discord oh, to make it actually look not terrible. Hang on, hang on. I'll take us. I'll take us to a fresh white page, and you can give us. You can give us a layout. Ooh, right. so fresh. All right, here we go. Uh, and I'm going to do it in orange because I think the. Um, the uh, colouring on, on the ship itself on the outside is um, mostly white, uh -huh. um, kind of orange accents and stuff, and most of the bulbous, like, protrusion stuff is obviously kind of like glass or uh, a, 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 like a more, um, a thinner material. Like an opaque, uh, like an of, opaque sort of like window like material. Yeah, area. kind of opaque in this sort of tinted blue. Um, so I think we're going to go for orange here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Here we go. Don't worry about it being cl like clean or, or cut in any particular fashion. We're just looking for like a basic floor plan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here it is. Okay, there we go. Um, I think the entrance is somewhere in here. Um, like a bulb in between two of the thrusters. Mm -hmm. so like ground like that. And the first area kind of is most of this wing. This is like the kind of cargo bit. Oh yeah, okay. Like storage, yeah. Yeah, and then we're gonna go. There's a little door. Well, there's a door frame. Uh, I've removed most of the doors just to kind of get through everything. Okay, so you got you got your bla your blast doors are removed currently out of their sliders yeah. and yeah. and all kind of like rounded um, tops and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't think there's a single kind of ninety degree angle in the ship anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very organic looking, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a lot of it is kind of, I imagine, most like sort of fishbowl like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah I like that. Um, so I think we head through here and we go in a couple of different directions. Um, this section here is kind of sectioned off. And this bit at the bottom and it kind of curves around there a little bit actually i should make the curve go all the way around there uh because this this we've decided is the hyperdrive bit at the back yeah like the engine so, room kind of yeah yeah for a moment there i thought you were drawing a butt <laughs> drawing a what booty <laughs> how dare how dare um so yeah like our hyperdrive area here yeah yeah, I think um, this here um, in the middle is probably, um, I think it's kind of living space. Yeah, you gotta have like a common room, kind of. Like, this, yeah. ship, this ship could crew, could crew like, yeah, four or five people, you know. A place so. to sp uh, play our space chess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Se seats and, and games, yeah. And then all this section off on the left 
is probably um crew quarters oh yeah like separated rooms and like a line yeah yeah um which will need to be uh changed depending on who's in there because my room the biggest one <laughs> uh, probably this one at the back because it, it shares the wall with the hyperdrive room mm -hmm. um rather than having a bed has like a a, a large a tank yeah yeah again like a like a tank um because i think probably sleep in water because it's probably slightly more natural and you can keep hydrated with your skin and stuff yeah like uh, but we can float, float a little that bit makes, that makes a lot of sense for mon cal because you gotta like get that amphibious sort of like wetness you know back yeah in. absolutely but like i already imagining like um fitting one of these um with like kind of a charging dock rather than a bed mm -hmm. and then a bed for the actual humanoids um and i think we probably what else do we need i mean um, I, I like the idea of there's like if you don't mind me sort of like throwing some input Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh i love the idea of this like kind of open floor plan that leads to a like sectioned off cockpit like a lot of it is kind of like open in the middle if you know what i mean like there's like a like a wide sort of open space for the common room area and maybe like some utilities or what have you in like a part of that open space um, yeah absolutely and then and then the cockpit like how many seats do you have? Because, like, the Millennium Falcon has two seats, right? And then, like, two sort of, like, against the wall, like, back. You could, like, put four people in a cockpit. Um, the other question is, is the weapon system, uh, like, a different uh, position somewhere? Or is it, like, positioned in the cockpit as, like, a, you know? Yeah, I was, I was just thinking about that, actually. I think the cockpit probably kind of goes around here and then has an extra kind of area so there's yeah like pilot and co-pilot seats but then also um it's kind of slightly open to allow for um the weapon system on this wall oh yeah like armaments from like the front of the ship because i think this the ship has like front facing lasers it doesn't have like a like a turret the same way that like yeah no it definitely isn't a turret it's definitely yeah. a programming coordinates to make it shoot and I think there's the extra two, um, like, chairs for people working on that. And then maybe, like, comms is, is round on. Yeah, for sure. And you're like, um, I like that. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Um, the, door in there. The, the thing I will mention, like, mechanically, when it comes to, like, ship flying, is that everybody has a role. The pilot pilots. Mm. But, like, if you have a gunnery skill, you can use the weapons. If you have... Like, everybody gets their turn in space as well. It's not like the ship goes, then other ships go. Oh, yeah, it's for like sure. Mm. Players go. Um, and, like, stuff that you can do are, like, engine stuff, pilot stuff, co-pilot stuff, gunner stuff, uh, generic helpful stuff. You know what I mean? In, in terms of, like, the, the vibe. So I'm thinking about the layout of the ship based on, like, how quickly could you move from one place to the other? You know what I mean? Like if you needed to emergency go and repair the engines, could you do that in a short move? You know what I mean? Like is something that while you're writing this, I'm considering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately it's just because of the way that, that we've been given the design, mm -hmm. the pilots are kind of at the front Oh yeah. and the engines all the way at the back. That, but, I mean, it's um, not a gigantic ship. I mean, Han Solo can sprint no, around the Millennium not. Falcon on short moves for sure, you know? Yeah, and I think... Um, uh, other sections that we should probably have, but we don't currently have, and, and, <laughs> and again, this goes, goes back to what Mabel said, um, like, we don't have any, like, medical facilities or anything. Um, there's no... Actually... There's no sick this, bay. <laughs> yeah, no sick bay. Uh, but this entire area over here. I have to wait until it resolves. Yeah, okay, I see. Is just, just like Omni's trash workbench. <laughs> like a big long like workbench. The entire yeah. side of the thing is just like. In the same way that they have magnetic stuff all over the walls like it, they're all up on the walls and there's different tables of different sizes round ones kind of more dipped ones um 
one kind of looks like a sink, but it has like a orb like floating above it magnetically for some reason. Yeah. Um, okay. So layout wise, I think we're we're looking pretty good. Um, now yeah, now that we have now, there, now that we boss. yeah now that we have an idea of the space, I wanted to give us an idea, and I wanted to like allow that to be your idea of the space, Dave, as much as yeah. possible. Um, what's the impression? You know what I mean? Like, as the three of you all bored, you know, and you you sort of look around from from where you come in, like, what's the interaction? You know, like to get back from the speculative to the character, you know, if you know what I mean. What a hunk of junk. <laughs> Yeah, Mabel is uh, unimpressed. Thoroughly unimpressed. I know you don't have facial expressions, but I can tell. Yeah, there's just something about her body language and her like conspicuous silence on the topic that's just like, mm, she's probably not happy with this. What did you do to this poor thing? Yeah, the panels are all missing from the walls, you know, like, Ami has clearly been trying their hardest to search for, like, uh, the source of an electrical issue, you know what I mean? That they've had to, like, go all the way down the wire, that they've got to track through, like, three or four panels, like, these kinds of things. It, yeah, it, is, it like is in a state of, it is not, it is not space-worthy currently, like, if you, if you tried to take it up, it wouldn't go. But I told you it was a work in progress, but can't you see the possibilities? They're endless within kind of the scope of the shape of the ship and stuff. Um, I mean, show me the cockpit and then maybe I can give you an idea whether or not I see the potential. Oh, yeah, I've got most of that working again. Uh, it doesn't really help if the rest of it doesn't work there. Well, yeah, the buds are all in place, but if you push on the thrusters, I'm going to turn on. Uh, here, here, I made you some mean modifications. You tell me that at some point you took the buttons out and then messed with it and then put them back? Well, yeah, you need to if you're going to make... You're not going to be able to make use of the uh, increased output of uh, the rear thrusters if you're just going to have a lever that goes up to seven. No, no, no. <laughs> you replace the lever, so go all the way up further. It's important. It's uh, an ergonomics how thing. How exactly are you expecting this ship to be able to travel? Part of that's also future-proofing. Uh, maybe it doesn't quite go to seven yet, but one day. <laughs> going to be the fastest so for ship. now all of the levers and buttons are vanity levers and buttons yeah until they're kind of plugged in so i actually i actually have an aesthetics question about the cockpit uh omni um because yeah. i'm i'm thinking back to like mon calamari ships that i've seen in canon you know what i mean like the return of the jedi the the, the those kind of ships and the control consoles are all like attached to the chairs you know what I mean? In in a certain way, like the pilot chair or the command chair has like a screen attached to it or like a movable, deployable, like control panel, these kinds of things. Those are capital ships. But do you think that's a Mon Calamari design or do you think that's just like a the ship is very large design? Like, what does the cockpit look like? No, I think um, I think there's sort of a combination where um, Omni's made it so people can move around the cockpit a little bit better without needing necessarily to go up out of the chairs yeah there's a bit of track okay underneath. there's like a like a slide to it yeah yeah so you've got kind of buttons on the side but they're for um they're not for like moving the ship as much they're more for um like activating or, or altering systems once they're already on. Yeah, shield distribution, you know, like a thruster speed, you know, like... Yeah, that's where the lever is that, like, makes it go further. Um, uh, and I've I've configured it um, so that you can lean the chairs back, like, really far without them falling over. <laughs> like, I found the sweet spot of, like, you can chill as hard as you can. 
without this is, like, this is, is a gamer well, spaceship is, this, is what i'm hearing is, is this is this like a so you can sleep while the like hyperspace takes you wherever without leaving the cockpit or like you know like yeah like, this is a like um so, yeah so it's like kind of a lot more of a livable space yeah um, i got you yeah rather than being a spaceship that takes you from a to b um you got like a mini you got like a mini fridge in the cockpit you know yeah it's like invested in spending a lot of time in here rather than you know it like it feels like a bachelor's car <laughs> where they just have the bottle up in the front seat <laughs> you know oh. <laughs> yeah mm. Mm. it's just no it's just like nicely tricked out you know what i mean it's like it's, yeah it's... yeah so it's kind of like um like shipping trucks right yeah. where they have like yeah, bunks yeah. in them and stuff and they're designed to be very comfortable and that you spend a ton of time in them because you're meant to just be driving for I, yeah stretches. i think the chairs the chairs are obviously like a focus you know what i mean like it's clear that they are they are made for like long haul um sort of space travel you're expected to like sit in them for a long time though a lot of spaceships you like set the hyperspace and you go you know what i mean yeah you don't I need imagine, to like be in the cockpit i imagine omni is the kind of person who would be neurotic enough to want to be there immediately if something went wrong you know what i mean like that kind of that kind of yeah. person so yeah and i've i've gone for um memory foam type stuff oh, so yeah. that all different yeah. kinds of creatures can sit in them um yeah, you've got you've got alterations for different. Species. Yeah, I've got the... a very different back and skeletal structure yeah. than than other things. I'm much more round, uh, but other people can sit. You've chest got too. that sort of like gas bladder physiology. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, you make it sound so appealing, Elf. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I think I think that's kind of the vibe of um, of the ship. It's gonna. Um, it's one of those like you know it's gonna be nice when it is finished being like modified, but right now it's like halfway through being rebuilt. It's like you can see the bones are good. You know what I mean? Like the ship is a quality ship. But yeah, they stole a quality ship and then tore it apart. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And haven't finished putting it back together. So yet. I think it's around around this point during the tour that uh, uh, a person sort of like yells up the gantry. You know, like you can hear the voice of somebody going like, "Hey, anybody there? You, you guys inside?" Yep, yep. And uh, and I just kind of pause and was like, "Just take it all in." I'll be right back. <laughs> and yeah, and you head down the the gantry or like peer down the gantry, and there's a there's a a. Uh, 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 what do you call him? I oh, there's a race that I'm thinking. A Nikto, uh, like um, I think they're the Nikto, the like lizard. They're like lizardy humanoids, um, uh, standing there with like a, a pallet or what have you, like a like a pushable like hover car, uh, hover cart, uh, of of stuff, uh, assorted stuff, and like you looking at it, you recognize that this is like the stuff you could use to fix. X electrical problem or Y electrical problem, like what have you. Yeah, like clearly there has been done it, like a slight survey. You're, you're the, pretty, the question you're, was, you're do you want pieces good. randomly or do you want me to have a look? You're, clearly already had a look. You're pretty sure from assessing the stuff that is available that Bowusak has been on your ship at some point. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, exactly. There's no way he could be this specific with his like delivery if he hadn't already looked at it. You know, bribed some official to like go and check it out or <laughs> or what have you. Like, there's maybe he was looking up. I mean, he was looking to buy it from you at one point. You know what I mean? Like, That's maybe true. There's that whole like speculation. Yeah, uh, you just got to check it out for yourself. But yeah, it's clear. It's up. clear you have okay. you have here like some supplies and. The, the Nikto like walks up the gantry a little like to reach towards you and he has sort of a data pad and he's like just just sign off on the delivery so that I tell the boss you know you got everything sure um and I think Omni signature is kind of and I think um if I could the most Mon Calamari signatures yeah. start with kind of um a, a round like a oval or a circle or however they want to do it and then you kind of write in decorations of it like you were decorating uh, like an easter egg or something like that and uh -huh. that's how you 
Oh, that's cool. It. Yeah, um, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily say O M N I. It's just a. It's just like a, a decorative oval, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's cool. Um, and and he takes the data pad back and like looks at it, tucks it away, you know, in his on his belt or what have you. Goes like, hope they work out for you. I don't, you know, and it, he's clearly not invested, and <laughs> he's just he, he's just doing a delivery, you know, and he and he and he gets out of there once he once he's done, unloads the hover the wagon, you know, the hover uh, uh, pallet, and and uh, and heads out, uh, leaving you with the parts. Maybe we'll, would you mind giving me a hand with some of these? They're kind of heavy. Mabel comes back and helps out, but all the while is muttering about how she has surgeon's hands. <laughs> She's not a laboring droid. <laughs> She's not a yeah. laboring droid. Yeah, and like, yeah. The, and the pieces are stuff like, you know, a new frame for the command console or like, a, you know, a, a set of wires that you needed, like all coiled up neatly, you know, or uh, a piece of the hyperdrive that you're sure burnt out on your way here, you know, and it's it's like carbon scored or what have you, you need to change it. Um, yeah, for sure. And and it's just like the list goes on. But basically, like from a GM point of view, I'm saying you have the pieces here to fix the ship. It will take you time and mecha- like mechanics checks, but uh, that those mechanics checks pass or fail only change the amount of time it will take you. If you know what I mean, like the pieces are here to finish. Uh, yeah. What you were doing. I, I am a starship technician i can't fuck it up i yeah. can't get it wrong but it I, might take i don't i don't want to say i don't want to say you fail a mechanics check you lose pieces and then you can't yeah, do I appreciate it because i think that that's stupid you know what i mean like you're mm. you're capable of repairing the ship it's just a matter of how much time it takes you um, yeah for sure and also like, like an and mechanics. also like a measure of uh how good the parts are that bow sucks at you. you know like that's part of it as well yeah, um, sometimes slightly done in parts take longer to get calibrated well, and, or adjusted. And, or... and everything is like a little bit secondhand. It's clear that it's not like stuff that he has bought, you know, wholesale or anything. It's stuff he's stolen or or scal- salvaged from other starships, you know, or like other ships. So the coloring's a little off, you know, like you have white walls, but this command console is like eggshell, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like yeah, for sure. that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I would and... love I would love to have a, a preliminary mechanics role. Yeah, there's a bunch of machining tools on that weird wall that oh, I definitely, yeah. just shave off, like, like spend hours shaving off hard edges into, into <laughs> circles. Silas yeah. just snuck into the pilot, like into the cockpit. They're, they're just hiding in there for now. Yeah, they're like, the feel, feel free control. to just chill in there. Yeah, you're just like just checking out the pilot's it. chair, like looking at the control consoles and stuff like that, Sil. Do you want to give me like a pilot check? I can give you like a familiarity sort of like a real yeah. rundown. Yeah. I'd be down for that. Well, let's do the mechanics check for Omni first, and then I'll come to you. Um, okay. So, Omni, give me a mechanics check. Yeah. Is perhaps Mabel helping me by... I mean, Mabel's helping you bring stuff in. Is Mabel going to help you? Yeah, she's. Together? she can help you out. Yeah, I have right. a rank in mechanics, Sick. so I'm not completely useless. I will put a boost die cool. in. Do I want to use the force on this? Am I feeling greedy enough? Yes, absolutely. I Wonderful. mean, you may as well. Yeah. And I will use the and I will use the and I will use the force right back at you because you I can't use the same one like if we only had one point and you were turning it to dark side I couldn't then use it right back at you on the same check but I can yeah, but use I can use a dark side point I already have to contest your same check so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one to Im- increase the difficulty it, that being Bo Sox trying to like cheat you just a little bit and he gives you some bad quality stuff you know what I mean like. Or it doesn't even know, but it's not functional in the way you want it to be, or what, what have you. Okay. So uh, you're using the force to upgrade. Okay, we're good. Whoa! <laughs> the, the, like the the fucking run of five <laughs> successes, nailed it. Even with even with a red die against you, uh, you did. Imagine really not rolling really five successes. Really you're well. welcome. Um. <laughs> And, uh, and so, yeah. like you and you and uh, you and Mabel put together, you know, the parts while Zyle is like hanging in the cockpit, like checking out the the controls and what have you, imagining flying. Um, y- you and Mabel uh, put together quite a sizable like chunk of this. We take a couple hours to do like proper maintenance. You know what I mean? Uh, I would imagine. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a pretty good preliminary role for sure. We're going we're going well. 
Um, feel free to narrate if you want, if you want, if you have details of like how you're interacting with each other during this or what have you. I'm just trying to like give you the broad strokes of how it goes. Like it works out, you know? Yeah. I think Mabel is like very fastidious and precise in the way that, you know, a droid would be. Um, and so she's like very organized and works pretty quickly and efficiently. Spends time uh, making sure that the, the to. tools are in the right places and what have you for when. Oh yeah. yeah. Every tool goes back exactly where she found it. Like even if it was like, Oh yeah. Omni discarded this on a table. She puts it back in like the same orientation, same side up, like everything just like exactly as it was. Nice. I like that. Uh, I've, I've from somewhere found, you know, one of those, um, forging like kind of welding, like masks. welding masks yeah masks. oh i tell you what i think the welding mask is actually um because i've described like the back half having like a kind of helmet which yeah I put forward different kind of lenses like when i'm doing the space suit like that goes forward and then back seals this time it's kind of like a metal one uh over the front um that's cool. Which I, would be totally useless because my eyes are on the side, but it's like flipping into different modes. <laughs> I am a. Uh, I'm interested, Omni. What kind of a mechanic is Omni like when it gets down to the work? Are we talking somebody who's like, well, I've started this part, but I need to wait, so I'll wait, or like, well, I've started this, so I'll wait on that and I'll start this other thing, and then I'll go over here and I'll do, you know, like, are, are they sort of like focused or are they like a. Uh, do three projects at once or are they are like you know what i mean like without mabel's help would you lose your tools you know I'm, I'm just interested in like the vibe um i think omni has uh, in this ship and this is very different to how they work outside the ship um taken the time to build smaller um machines to automate doing things while they're doing other things Okay, so, so you, like an automatic solderer or something like that, like or spent, like a plasma spent, cutter that you've spent can, time and resource to improve the process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So while I'm doing like one thing, I'll program in like a three D printer to start going to make another part that I'll hand off to Mabel. And... Cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, and uh, and yeah, like you said, it's like it's sort of like different. You know, you have like a very project minded focus to the ship that you don't necessarily have outside yeah, of it but there's no blueprints anywhere you just like brain brain to yeah to it's table, all entirely in in their head there's like no designs and diagrams anywhere they're so they don't even nobody bother else to, could do they don't this. even bother to measure twice they just measure once you know what i mean because they know what the measurement will be they're just like very yeah very, absolutely very adept yeah that's cool i like that a lot um Zyle, let's talk about the cockpit uh, do you want to make me a piloting roll? Let me just set the difficulty. Is this Everything a space, so. is space this piloting would be, roll? This would be space piloting, yes. Sweet. I'm looking forward to failing this check. Are you ready? Yeah, hit it up. <laughs> Neutral. <laughs> Sweet deal. Um, I'm so, so good at this. While, so while, good at rolling in this game. So while Mabel and Omni are are doing like a bunch of repair stuff, and you can hear them in the background, you know, like the cockpit doors are open and you know, like sound carries. Um, you're sitting in the the pilot's chair, uh, which is this like very by comparison with some of the starships you've been in, this very sort of like comfortable, like uh, almost like plush sitting position. Um, there's a there's a console of like buttons in front of you, and then there's also like some stuff on the arms that like folds out or like a you know, a, a like a joystick, what have you, that 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 uh, would be used for like, like the space maneuverability. There's a lot like, of trackballs. Yeah, yeah, and there are a Keep lot of with the, like circular theme. Everything looks very like, yeah, that that Mon Calamari, like bulbous or like ergonomic, like no st no straight edges kind of a a feel to it, and that's a little unfamiliar, obviously. But you take the time to sort of guess at guess at edge. what does what. Um, and maybe press a couple. Nothing of is labeled. Ma Nothing maybe, will ever be labeled. And maybe press a couple of things that Omni's like, whoa, 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 I'm working on that. You know what I mean? And there's like a a little back and forth. Um, but uh, yeah, you you do you do sort of like familiarize yourself with the ship, and you can imagine, I think, like being the person in charge of it, like in charge of its movement, so to speak. It's not good vibes. I mean, it will when it's 
not falling to pieces. The cockpit is the most secure part of it, I think. Like, in terms of, like, its finished state, the cockpit is the most uh, not The most ripped complete? Up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, the kind of ship that Omni does not intend to ever need to remodel after this first one, so... Going for broke on the first one, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, so... That's kind of the first thing and the most important thing. Then I'll be working on the engines and that kind of stuff. And that's why all the panels are off. Is like everything else just doesn't matter until it works. Yes, yeah, it I makes like it. sense. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to find somebody who's willing to fly it out of you. I mean, it's pretty clear at this point that Zyl knows how to fly it. They were just checking your, like, pre-flight systems and, like, looking at the various buttons and what have you. Like, evasive or not, like, it's pretty tempting. Oh, no, it's absolutely. There's, um, at some point, like, Omni sighs and, like, you can't quite hear it because you're still, and there's a thin bunch of things going on. There's, like, a, a small notification on the side of the chair that you're sat on and if you take a little bit little like look at it um it's like authorization granted um like xyle blah 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 blah, blah, blah. and ju you just need to put like your hand on it and it will you'll be good you'll be allowed to fly it <laughs> self-satisfied xyle face <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so, uh, ship is great. I love it that we finally got to the MC-18 and had a little look around. Um, I need to think of a name for it. Yeah, you, I, I mean, you know, you can call it whatever you want. Actually, we could probably like work on that as a group. Yeah. Um, Mackie. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cute. MCI. Uh, we can just call it Mackie for short. MCI-8 or MC-18 <laughs> is like... Maki also has sushi implications. <laughs> yeah, great. I mean... Yeah. Exactly, it's it's yeah, a it's very, very fishy cute. ship. Um, but but uh, what and I'd it's like very round. What I'd like to do with our remaining time, we don't have like a whole lot of time to to go into oh, you yeah. know the the in depthness of anything uh, further. But I'd love to get like a little bit of like, well, Zyle, I mean not Zyle, uh, Krino's off doing stuff with Keld for like a whole nother day at least. You know, as, as they're what out in the they're out in the jungle like... somewhere. Is it like some sort of ritual? Is like the meditation involved? Does he have to get naked or something like that? Like yeah, I think they have to oil wrestle or like whatever. Oil mm. wrestle. Yeah. I mean, did you see the, the the look on his face when he even talked about her? He was really into her. <laughs> um, but but they're out they're out doing whatever. So what what's the like um. What's the, like, idle time for each of the characters like? And I think we have some time to go into, like, each of them having, like, a little vignette on their own with, like, whatever NPCs you want me to provide or, or what have you. Um, and then we'll we'll close it out for today. Uh, has anybody got, like, an idea or want to go first? Like, describe your living quarters or, like, what you get up to or, you know, some, some detail. Yeah, I could go. Yeah. Um... I'm kind of I'm kind of interested actually in like where Mabel lives and like what that yeah, space looks like. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. Um, um you, you pl feel free to pitch me things here cuz like I don't have an idea if you have like a thought about what you'd want for Mabel. This is like a good time. So to speak. Yeah, I don't think she has like a very I don't think she has like a private space exactly. I think she has like a a corner of a common space that her and a bunch of other droids is it the same Make space? Use of? Is it the same space that RST three is using for like a charging station currently? You know what I mean. Yeah, so it's probably like where all of that is. It's in her. It's like kind of like just a droid infirmary that she also lives in. Like a couple level, a couple of others. Like a couple levels down in Void City, like you take the turbo lift a couple levels down, and there's like a maintenance bay or what have you, and that that's where. Yeah, it's like not in a good a good part of town no, or whatever. Yeah. Like it's not in a desirable area. It's but... not it's not very trafficked because it is like for droid repair, so to speak. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like there's probably like a service layer or something where yeah. a lot of the like working droids operate and it's in some corner of there. And it's not that they like own it or rent it or whatever. It's just like 
part of the kind of guts of the facility. I mean, it's one of those things that's like it hasn't quite made the like droids as people transition yet. It's still the droids, yeah, exactly. as, the droids as equipment type uh, like service. But uh, she has kind of personalized mm-hmm. the space uh, to her, you know, her idiosyncratic needs and stuff. Um, so there are a bunch of like charging docks or whatever. And then there's this like open space that has been kind of set up as a little, uh, yeah, like maintenance facility. Do you have like privacy dividers or what have you? I'm thinking like small spaces needed for a for a droid to go offline and just charge and you could like... Divide, yeah, they have like, like those little nooks, which like a curtain um, or what have you on top of it or something like that. I think they've like added curtains, like they've taken yeah. one of those hallway, uh, kind of cloth pieces and put one up across the charging stations. Mm-hmm. Um, at least for the droids who kind of like care to have who that, have, who have the battery requirements and what have you. But also, like they, the droids, I think generally like Mabel among them, like she doesn't care about privacy. Yeah. So much like it's not like a value that she has. It is not a, a it is not a typical idiosyncrasy that you've developed, so to speak. Yeah, there are some that have. You know what I mean? As yeah, like some, for some maybe that's like a big deal yeah. or whatever. But for Mabel and for a lot of them, I think it's just like not something that they're used to having or that they would occur to them yeah. to have, especially from like between each other or within their group. Um, and so yeah, everything's kind of like uh very tidy and very organized within the space it's like you know like rows of benches or whatever that uh droids can like get set up on to like do repairs on I each think, other and stuff I think like that you, you still get human human visitors like utico employees and so forth that like are mechanics or maintenance techs or or what have you for the droids that are in specific employ you know what i mm-hmm. mean like getting repairs and like this kind of space is they have like several of these kinds of space but sometimes the overflow is that like you end up with like somebody here who you you don't recognize or who is like still restraining bolted to their tasks, so to speak, um, being repaired and, and what have you. And they don't pay you too much mind. It's like, you're a part of the scenery. Um, yeah. And then there's like a part of the space where a bunch of droids are set up um, where they're like not really fully functional anymore. Uh, yeah. Like, like broken droids, so to speak. Like Yeah. And so it's kind of like it's like almost like a ICU for droids. Like yeah. some of them are laid out on the benches and are still like operational, but are missing components or are you know in need of like critical service. You've got a bad motivator or what have you. And yeah, so they're like there and hanging out, and Mabel spends a lot of time like sitting down next to them and like talking to them, like socializing with and, them, like people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah. like spending time and com- communalizing with them, kind of. Um, even as they are, uh, you know, is it sort of like, is it sort of like with your previous human, is this like an adoption of your attitude with like your previous human patients? Like when you were operating at your function, your, your quote unquote designated function within the Mm -hmm. empire, like you, you would be doing like bedside manner stuff. You'd be like interacting with like injured personnel or what have you is it yeah i wonder how much bedside manner was afforded to like stormtroopers and test subjects well if a droid is programmed to operate a certain way like that's up to you you know what i mean i don't think she i don't think she was very like kindly before i I think this is kind of a new thing this is like a thing that's inherent to her rather than something that she was programmed to do um it's like a, a value set that she has uh she, she's kind like, of developed spontaneously i like that yeah Maybe extrapolated from certain principles, but not uh, something that. But she not was like something perfect. Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna say, when you get an emotion, you build it around the um, situation you've been in, right? Yeah, like yeah. Like her morality is something like this is for her like a morally good thing to do, and her morality isn't derived from some like programmed imperative. It's like a mm. set of conclusions that she came to over the course of her like abandonment as it were yeah over the course of her like becoming self-aware and yeah and... becoming sentient rather than a, a a like a tool so to speak quote unquote yeah and i think like she was always kind of on that cusp anyways because of the complexity of her like function she and, had to be she had to be allowed her to make role judge- required her to make be, judgment yeah. calls and so forth yeah. yeah yeah so we see a bit of that here where she's like yeah treating the droids very kindly and very kind of uh, in like a very like nurturing or like tender way that she probably doesn't behave that way towards like I think 
biologicals. And I think stuff. I think also that the reception that you get from them is like very different depending on the droid. Obviously, like they are in the same way, like drawing these conclusions now that they are like without function, quote unquote, and mm-hmm. and like some would prefer, you know, have like despair. Some are like encouraged by your like treatment of them, and it's difficult to like make the judgment calls on like who is good, who is a good person to like encourage, talk to, like get through it. And like the, the end result is that they probably all are, but some of them are not as good at dealing with it. If you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's like a psychological element. Yeah. And, and there's, well. and it's like coming through that in a way that is like a emotion, like emotionally developmental a little bit more than like a humanoid, you know, like a or organic being who is used to feeling fear who is used to feeling these things, like you know, uh, sadness, you know, these things, like these droids come yeah, to this, terms. Yeah, this this straddles idea. like trauma counseling and raising a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like both of those things at the same time, kind of. Yeah. We we'd, we'd worked on trying to find a method for this, right, to encourage this, which we tested on RST three. Yeah, the program, right? The yeah, the, like, yeah. It's like a, it's not a thing that like overwrites them, but it's just like a set of principles or programmatic things that like help them unpack their experience and like yeah choose how to define them so omni and stuff like that. omni has been down here and seen this this kind of like oh, yeah. stuff as well and like help for you sure with certain repairs or or what have you because obviously getting these these droids functional again is like part of the the process as much as possible yeah and it's a bigger job than mabel can do on her own and, and, and it's a job mostly it's a, has to do it alone it's so. a job bigger than anyone because yeah. like the parts are just not available or like you you know you don't have access to the stuff or like whoever has the stuff is not willing to relinquish it you know what i mean yeah exactly um um it's a little maybe as a quick aside speaking of which uh i'm gonna throw some more money into this yeah of course yeah um so i'm just gonna drop another 200 credits cool noted um i don't want to change she has some new parts and other stuff i don't want to change your obligation quite yet i think it's it's at a good level um and there's some stuff coming up that will that will be more dramatic, I think, in terms of like the assistance that you might get. Um, um, but yeah, one last detail, I guess, yeah. that I'll put forward is that like the stuff that she has bought this time around um, is not so much like functional components as it is uh, things to address changes that a bunch of the droids want to implement on themselves. Like like choice related changes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. These are like optional upgrades or adjustments like, that they're making to the their kind of like I don't like now that I am non functioning in X way. I would like to make sure I can do Y thing. Or yeah, like yeah. Like they have yeah. decided they're they're self directing on what they want their yeah new that's kind of functions to be, and then and there and there's no there's no that. reason you can't get uh very transhuman on droids you know what i mean like like yeah they get to just like be like i want to be a different shape now i'm like okay cool modifications are doable and it's that's that's very cool um cool yeah no i i mean it sounds like mabel is a very serious person you know what i mean like generally they're 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 they have a a very somber sort of task you know what i mean like it is yeah yeah like she takes this all as a very kind of significant obligation that she has um, in the colloquial sense, not also just in yeah, the game no, mechanic no, course, sense, but like, yeah, for her, this is there's like a sense of duty around this. I love it. I love it as like a a great like Mabel illustration. Do either of the 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 other of you have like a thought about like what you get up to during the time that you have like alone? I think Zyle's being super excited about the fact that they now kind of have something of an apprenticeship with this uh, this researcher about mm-hmm. the Vodian. Uh, the Vodian um, native species um, and has probably gone back to their room and is looking at the mask and kind of thinking over like the conversation they were having about the language and the possibility that that Pele is a part of their communication. Yeah, the, the, and, um, the petrified mask you remember is the sort of like purple blue of the like mushrooms that exist uh, out there, though it's all faded by the fact that it, the wood is like petrified, you know? Yeah. So I think they're kind of looking over the language again, kind of trying to see if they can't determine, uh, like, um, based on like the knowledge of the mask and like some of the the colorations that the the researcher was talking about, seeing if they can't like start 
putting a couple of pieces together themselves. So they have something to contribute I think, to the conversation. I think that, you know, your your focus on the task is like very admirable and I'm sure Haverford would be into it. You know what I mean? Um, and Zyle clearly has like a determinative, like, this is what I want to know about. It's difficult to determine, even with the extra information, um, it would be very difficult to determine like the the content of the language. Even Haverford right. didn't seem to have like this word means X thing or this concept is Y thing. I think it's more thing. about like crafting theories. D does Zyle have any theories? Um, well, this would be helpful if I had visuals of what the language actually looked like, um, but uh, which I'm sure if I, I certainly if I, I speak certainly it into the universe. I certainly haven't written any of it, so I yeah, can't no, exactly. give it to you. Um, yeah. I think what they do is is what where they start is that they like kind of start taking like the denotations they find throughout like the written and I think, they kind of like put those to one I side. I think I can give you one piece of information just generally cool. like when, when you're going through stuff and it, that is that you realize you think that the language goes from bottom to top uh, in in the way that it like it writes um, the structure seems to be like the paragraphs or whatever and like in weird places sort of like related to the sort of like top of the page it rather than grows the, like the plants bottom. yeah it grows, Holy it, it grows from the earth so like cool. like it's many very, very cool. like many things yeah so i think i think that like basically what they're doing is they're kind of like they're taking the repeated phrases and they're putting them to one side they're taking like the denotations and the like of like like the colors essentially and putting them to one side and kind of like starting to break apart components of it and that's mm -hmm. kind of where they're what they're doing so you spend your free time just obsessing over this like Vodian language stuff right like I... and it's 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 mostly because like as far as they're concerned they they think that what omni said is completely right is just like if they can read what's being said they can start to like un un like start to untangle the puzzle of the actual place which is what they're really interested in more than the language or anything else they want to know more about the place and like the feeling that they had when they first walked into it of like like this overwhelming sense of yeah. like there was something about the place. yeah the presence that you, yeah. that you felt yeah okay cool i like that so you're, you're sort of like you spend your time privately in like your room going over stuff Occasionally, you get a, a check in from an employee of like Madame Harani's or whatever. Like Brie will stick her stick their head in and be like, "You need anything? Like lunch, dinner? You know, like kind of stuff." And there's like some casual back and forth like that, but nothing nothing that I would go into deeply if you don't want to engage with it. But it, you know, they're just I mean, it's mostly just, just lots of lots of like just absentmindedly shoving whatever food they happen to put <laughs> yeah. in front of them, and then like maybe at some point looking up and realizing what time it is and being like ah yes i should <laughs> sleep sleep is required yeah. yeah um wonderful uh omni do you have any like personal stuff you want to get up to or like some description of like your space or what have you yeah i think um as now um there is a significant undertaking um on the ship mm -hmm. Um, I think I think Omni works in short, incredibly intense bursts, like very frene frenetic of, bursts. Yeah, yeah, and then lots of napping <laughs> as well. Like, um, and in between those, we'll switch between working in the ship and then needing to go up to Madame Harani's and, um like subsist to a certain yeah, extent grabbing to... a grabbing a, a, a steak sandwich and uh doing some repairs on some droids or what have you yeah yeah like um has now changed the method from sitting in the booth and tinkering there to um taking on a job taking it back down to the ship working on it on that workbench and then taking it back up i got you yeah so you're using the ship as more of a base at this point like now that you're feeling that you can get it functioning yeah that's like it's it's now my house yeah yeah, yeah of thing. um even though i don't have like proper doors and <laughs> privacy and stuff i just pull the ramp up no but i totally just, like, i totally sleep. get that like it's like the people who work on their car incessantly you know right? it's like a you know it's like the the mindset is like very similar um 
and also <laughs> like and also like yeah the the odd jobs that keep you in credits so to speak uh you know like come coming along you do like your mechanics on the ship you take a break or like you need to wait for something you do the like tinkering with the other thing yeah like, yeah it's that same sort of like i'll set that thing going and now i can work on a job and then the job will require something that I can automate and I'll go back to the ship and then I'll fall asleep. Is like it, sometimes is it, is not. It like, is it like three hours of work, 40, 45 minutes of sleep, three hours of work, 45 minutes of yeah, sleep? Absolutely. Kind of like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I totally understand that because that's how I operate in real life. <laughs> yeah, I do sometimes as well, for sure. Um, but yeah, so that that's that's really cool. Uh, is there anything else you want to you wanna tell us about like the Omni... It's okay um, if the answer is no. You know what I mean? Like, I think Omni talks to themselves quite a lot. Oh, they've got that, like, keep the process up by talking to myself about what the process is. Yeah, it's it's almost like um, you need to kind of keep up the APM with all different parts of your body. You keep the mind keep engaged. The energy. Yeah. yeah, so even if you, like, don't actually need to say what you're doing, sometimes you kind of narrate it or you think about something out loud at the same time as doing something else mentally. Um, because I think fundamentally Omni is like very kind of um, intellectual less in, in terms of, has a bit of education, but is more just has very high throughput they're a curious in, in they're a curious of... person right like and all sorts of things appeal to them right yeah yeah so um... i uh I, omni's a live streamer they just talk and say nothing I, <laughs> I've got, I've got yeah you. omni could omni could stream yeah 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 if that exists in star wars it doesn't uh, yeah well i'm sure it does hollow vids are a thing and like you know entertainment in general like, it would never occur if you, occurs, if you wanted know. to you know if you wanted to play a minor celebrity in this system i'm sure you could um, oh yeah absolutely you know what i mean uh yeah. okay great cool i'm i'm happy with like what we got we got out of that um i know we don't have like a ton of time left so we'll just we'll just do our our close out i think i don't want to add anything you know sprinkle anything on top of that um so let's do shout outs my dear friends we'll bring it to a close uh dave why don't you go first all right um thank you so much everybody for coming um Thank you and awesome job to Elf for uh, adapting and and finding like still incredibly interesting stuff for us, um, which I'm I'm given to understand was not what uh, given was prepared the, yesterday. Given the, the given stream. that you refuse to pursue the main quest while Crino isn't here, <laughs> yeah, it's Crino's quest. I know, I know, uh, but yeah. And thank you as well to everybody on the Discord um, for helping just enrich this to an almost ridiculous amount. <laughs> like that thing about the writing going upwards, I'm just like, yeah, that wasn't mm. that wasn't me. That was the Discord. Yeah, mm, just just perfect. You all get 10 XP by the way, and Crino gets nothing. I love XP. Thank you. Um, wait, no, I can say that after. Um, for me personally, follow me on Twitter at Dave underscore the underscore human. Um, like Omni, I have uh, about a million half-finished projects, um, including a 5e one, which I'm I'm really excited about. I think that's a really cool one. But um, yeah, I can't show anything about it yet because it's not quite condensed. It's all very <laughs> spread out. Yeah, hopefully you'll get to see that soon. Wonderful. Aki, you want to go next? Hi, everybody. I'm Aki, and you can find me over on Twitter at Genie in a Bottle. That's M X G I N I I N A B O T T L E. And my entire Twitch streaming channel can be found on my personal Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Shidari Aki. That's S H I D A R E A K I. Um, I am up to all the same stuff that I'm usually up to. So there have been no major changes in my schedule or additions uh, there too. Um, I apologize if I seemed a little bit distracted during the stream. I think I might 
be uh, developing an ear infection and have been in a little bit of pain oh, no. uh, during all of this. Uh, but uh, I'm, 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 I'm mustering through it. Anyways, uh, yeah, I really like playing this game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I like Zyle. I like how inquisitive they are. I like how, like, they're they're very much like uh, thirsty to learn all there is about everything. Playing playing a a, a species that uh, lives in a repressive society society and suddenly has the opportunity to like access all that they could not access before has been a lot of fun. Sweet. They're like Ariel. <laughs> Sweet deal. Uh, and Andrew, you want to? Uh, yeah, I'm Andrew. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Commuting Crow. Uh, I have a game called Girl by Moonlight about tragic magical girls uh, that is coming out eventually, and you can learn about it on Twitter. Wonderful. And of course, there's me. Hello, friends. I'm Distracted Elf. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Distracted Elf or on Twitter at Distracted Elf. Uh, I've been doing a lot of random game streaming as well as uh some writing streaming for 5e on tuesdays uh eventually we'll be getting back into doing some some dnd i think on mondays uh group wise and um i also run the gm stream for this series on thursdays at 1 p.m pst so the day before this uh at the same time to prep for what might happen during that session which the last two has been very helpful <laughs> um it has it has actually but uh the other thing that you should know is that this show has a discord and it is a place we talk about a bunch of details and my quote unquote chat co gms and i come up with cool things that uh, we can put the players through or some you know some small details that to add to the world and that kind of stuff definitely check out the discord uh the other thing i need to talk about is roll 20 the program by which we roll a bunch of dice on the internet now roll 20 is great because you can set up a game with whoever you want anywhere in the world basically so sign up today at roll20.net and you won't have to invite your awkward roommate steve to your game just because you're using the living room table yay roll20.net check it out <laughs> yes steve goddamn steve you're always, on notice steve. we're always his cheeto fingers touching my miniatures get the Fuck out of here, Steve. Anyway, uh, see you guys later. Have a good one. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining, and uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time. Bye.